So if you, this is the Teams um, link. So if you just go here and go to files, you should be able to see all your data sets. So I've added the data sets we're going to use for today. Um, and I've added your assignments questions um, for this class. So you can just submit here. Please, when you're trying to, someone is giving me a feedback, so I'm just going to mute everybody. When you're trying to um, access all of these data sets, please and please and please and please and very please do not edit in here. Come here. I'm going to show you how to download it. So you download it to your um, laptop. Come here and just click on download. OK, please and please and please do not edit it because once you once you edit it on here, another person that wants to download it will download your edited version and we don't want that. OK, so please and please and please click this three button and download it. Download it to your date to your um, local computer and then you can start using it from there. But do we all have access to this? You should all have access to this particular place, if not the SharePoint, but you should have access to this particular um, the focus community um, team <coughs> page on Teams. So check it now. You should be able to, and this document library leads you directly to the SharePoint. So if you don't have access, if you click here, it will open the SharePoint, open it in the SharePoint for you, but you don't even need to go there because it's here already. So you can do whatever you want here. Okay. Please, if you have access to it, just respond yes in the in the chat quickly so that we can start class. Thank you. And I've started the recording, so this is going to go on YouTube as well, so you guys can have access to it just so that you are aware. Okay. I'm waiting for everyone. We have about how many people in class? We have 16 people in class, so I'm waiting for everyone to just type yes quickly, please. I see hands raised. Is that for questions or to tell me that you have access? Uh, sorry, I can't seem to access uh, my my chat. OK, so you have access. No, I don't have access. I can't. No, do you have access to the files? Yes, yes, I do. OK, that's fine then. The chat sometimes I think is a Teams thing. Some people don't have access and some people um, they do. It happens to me sometimes as well. Um, Dara Mola, is your hands raised because you have access? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, Mr. Polari, is your hands raised because you have access? Um, I have access on um, the SharePoint, not via okay. Teams. And also, I can't access my charts, so I don't see it. I can't see anything on charts. Oh, wow. I don't know what the chat problem is or because are you joining via your, for people that cannot access the chat? Are you joining um, via your via your laptop or your phone? I'm using, I'm using, my, using my phone. I am using my laptop. OK. Um, do you want to share your screen with me quickly? Um, what's the, I'm using um, my laptop. OK, I'm all, do you want to share your screen with me quickly? Let me just see see what's going on. All right. Let me see if I can. Um, OK, so Adiola is saying that if you join from the SharePoint, I actually shared the SharePoint link yesterday. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to share it again. Maybe after our class. I don't want to do it while we are in class now. I'll share it again after our class. And then if you get the link, just try and join um, and we'll see if if that helps. And also, if you're joining with the 
if you're joining with another account that is not the one that's giving access to you, you might have that problem as well. Um, Adiola, can you remove me <laughs> from your screen and show me? Um, I said Adiola, sorry, I'm on with me. I um, and, <laughs> and show me your team's page, not myself. <laughs> sorry. Favor, what's going on? Um, <clears throat> I have like maybe because of the previous class, like I'm just seeing everything and it's like really confusing. So the previous class is the focus community. <clears throat> um batch um cohort one. This one is cohort two. So whatever you should see should be under cohort two. Um okay, okay. So like me your screen. Mm, let me okay. see because I'm all may I stop sharing that screen. Um, I think I'm sharing now. Yeah. I can't should, uh, should desktop. I just switched the laptop using the email address you gave them um, access to and it's still the same thing i can't access the chat it's saying um it's only mm -hmm. available to the team members yeah because you probably did not click that sharepoint link that like adiola said mm -hmm. um so what i would do is i'll send that sharepoint link again i'll send it okay. out again and we'll see if you can access it all right, all right. thank you can you see my screen now go to teams me Mm, yes, you favor. Go to Teams on the left hand side. Go to Teams. Teams. Yeah. Oh, teams. Chat. Okay. Right. Um, move move me away from this screen. I can see. Remove me. Yep. So on this data and click on it. Okay. And then click on files. No, 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 no. Oh, go back. back to teams, then this, and then go to your right hand side. Up, see files. No, see files. See files in the middle there. Yeah. Right. So oh, this okay. is this is for this class. So okay. it, that's how to navigate to get there. Okay. Um, Omarumi, are you sorted? Thank you. You're welcome. Omarumi, are you sorted? I think she left. Did she leave? Okay, I think she left. Okay, is everyone sorted? We all have access. Um, I would send out that link again. Um, please, now is the time to speak oh, if you don't have access so that if I can walk you through, if it's something I can walk you through. I'm going to assume everyone has access. I'm going to I, don't start access to me. I don't have access to me. I don't have access to me. I don't have access. I've been trying to... You don't have so access the, to what? Um, the, the folder you shared. I have the folder. So let me see. Can you share your screen? Okay. Let me see your teams itself. The way Favor showed it earlier, I don't want to see myself. So, uh... okay, can you? See? Sorry, guys, we'll start class now, but I just want to make sure that everyone is on the same page and sort this out once and for all. So this is. OK, so no, take me to your teams. I'm using web. Oh, OK. 
okay so it, it will be not, best for you to download it's not yes i downloaded it but it's still telling me this is what's showing me but i downloaded it already no you downloaded teams yes i did uh sorry come on, let me show you my downloads so this it seems i downloaded mm -hmm. have you have you have you run the code have you run it yes i did but but it doesn't seem to download. So okay, so click on. Uh, can I request control on? Click on the Teams Windows. Just click on it. Okay. So Not the showing folder, but the 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 this thing itself. Okay. I see you clicking. Have you clicked? Yes, can you see this? I can see your mouse, but it's not going to where I want it to go to. Go to, you know, that what is highlighted, the blue part. Where, what says that part that it says Teams Windows, blah, blah, blah. X64. Yes, I've clicked it. It should pop up then. It should pop up because that's, that's, um, that's a... That's your install link. Yeah, if you click on that, the install page should pop up for you to install it on your laptop. Yes, it's loading. It's, it's loading, but it's not. Um, okay, show me that page. Installed yet. I want to see that page. If, if you can see it on your screen, I can't see it. Okay, um, I need to change what I'm sharing. Okay. Um, Sandra, is that the same problem? Is it the same? Is this the same problem you're having? Are you using um? Are you using web? Yes, I clicked the link um from the email. So that was how I joined. Okay, but. I want to see your team. You know the way Favor just showed us our teams. Yes, I can't. I can't find it. I don't even know where to click to get it. Share your screen while Peter is is figuring okay. out his own. Yeah, <clears throat> I have access to the chat now. This is my this is my screen. Right. So click on this your teams um stuff. Let me see. Which one? The, um, the one no the one that you've opened already on your tax bar okay so click on oh it's not um if you open it it will take okay no leave that one go to your desktop see towards the left hand side i don't know which one which one is the latest one is it the your desktop itself okay which of the teams is the latest one the one on the left hand side or the one on this the right one. hand side? okay click on double click on it okay amazing um Um, that three dots, what does that three dot do? I'm trying to get access to your Teams app itself, not the video, not the call. Um, yeah, I know because you've opened it from the call, you most likely would not. Okay, Sandra, if you can try and because I sent quite a number of links. So try and click on all those links and just see if any of them will give you access. Um, if not, what in, I would do is I would- In the email? In the email, yes. Um, if not, what I would do is I'll have to send it out to you again, okay? 
Um, Simbat, what's up? I am having the same problem as well. Share your screen, please. I'm waiting for you to share your screen now. Hello, Olamide. Yes, please. Yes. Who is so, speaking? Um, it's among me. I have been able oh, to. Oh, you left. Yes, I've been able to access my chat now. So what I noticed was I joined in using the link you sent. Oh, that way. So okay. what I did now is I joined in. I signed into um, Teams using my email. And then mm. joined in. Amazing. I like problem solvers. Well done. Thank you. Simbayat, do you still want to share your screen or we should move on? Great. Um, da, 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 da. So you joined from web as well. So, okay. Exactly what Sim, um Omaomi just said now. <clears throat> if you join from web, you will have that problem. So what you want to do is um, try and log in into your Microsoft Teams app with the email address that you provided. And can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. OK, try and log in with the email you provided into your Teams and then go ahead and find click those links and try and join the meeting you should because if it doesn't give you that let me, let me share my screen okay. so you guys understand what i'm saying it, you need to be able to see this place if you cannot see this place you will struggle with having access to yeah. both your charts and your documents so you need to sign in here right see i have too many things signed in if you sign in here you have access to this environment and you need this environment. Once you have access, once you're able to get into this environment, you can have access to everything else. And this goes for everyone that is having the same problem. So sign in first, have an account, and then try and make sure it's the email that you have used, that you have sent to me, or you've used to communicate with me because that's the email I gave access to. So okay. even if you're joining with any of your other accounts, that other account will not have access to all of these things because that email address is not there. A lot of people had that issue too the last time they were joining with other accounts. So if you sign in properly, if you want to go out, sign in properly and try and see, log in and see if you have access to this. Because when you sign in, this should automatically pop up and you can see this environment, okay? I think we've done a lot of admin. Peter, are you sorted? Or did you understand what I said? You, if you do the same thing, I believe you should also, um, you should you should get a solution to it. Peter, are you here? Maybe he left. Peter, can you hear me? Okay, let's start class. Um, so that we don't use the old day for so i've also uploaded this your lecture notes i've uploaded i've uploaded them here so if you go here and you say lecture notes you have access to them okay so if you want to download them to your laptop and open them as we are going along you, you feel free to do that um Right, welcome to class, everyone. Um, it's very good to have you here. And like I've said before, please open your mind, be very open-minded about everything we are going to learn in class throughout the next six to seven weeks. 
just keep your mind open and things will go smoothly almost um so agenda will be we'll talk about we'll take a break by 12 so that everyone can get 15 minutes to go and make themselves a cup of tea cup of coffee get yourself some cookies and then we'll come back by 12 15. so by the time you people see that because when i get when i start teaching i get lost into it if you say that it's already 12 o'clock and i'm not telling you people goodbye please call my attention to it so that i don't forget thanks and god bless symbiot i hope you have access now um okay so we're gonna learn basic knowledge when you know needed to excel as a data analyst i'm going to introduce you to the da tools excel sql power bi i am thinking i've not decided if i want to also teach you guys tableau as a gift i haven't decided and that's because it depends on how fast we finish um because the classes don't end until around december 10th and i would not be free the next week after that so i haven't really decided on that but we'll see if i decide then we'll do like a short quick intro into tableau so you guys have access to it but i assure you that once you know this very well you can it's a skill that is transferable you can always pick this up easily and then there'll be practical sessions like i've said i've already given you guys i hope um afiz my darling i know you can hear me i know you don't like me calling out please i hope you've um when i was giving those assignments but we'll have a conversation to um later but please help me um compile a list so that we can send it to everyone after class so everyone would not say that they did not hear or they forgot okay mm -hmm. thank you um so we'll have practical sessions I'm going to give you data sets every week as much as possible. You're going to you're going to get your hands dirty. You're not just going to hear me talk and tell you this is how to do it. You're going to figure it out yourself as well. Um, projects, resources, build your portfolio. Every single thing I have told you to open, Medium, GitHub, all of those things is basically to help you build your portfolio. By the time you start applying for you know entry level roles and they're asking you what you have done, you have you're not just in now trying to start pulling things in you already have things that you can show them and how you've progressed and trust me people like progression people like seeing people start from small and how they've advanced themselves what we're gonna do i'm bringing in um someone to help us with the cv review there's somebody that is so good with linkedin i have not just she hasn't been she takes breaks from social media she's like me if during the LinkedIn stuff, I can see if I can speak to her um, to come and she's really good. She's really good with LinkedIn. What she will most likely do is take one person's LinkedIn um, page and just review it in general and everybody can learn from it. I'm going to try my best to see if I can have that conversation with her and just beg her to please come on board for just like one hour. I would try. I would try um and just that's just because i kind of want I, I can i know i can tell you guys what to do but i like people who are professionals who they do that thing and she actually gives free um a lot of free things um i'll have that conversation but then i have to give something in return that's just the problem so i'll figure it out and see um what i can if i can get how on bird to help us with that so that at least you're going in to the job market fully ready um so a quick guide into the basically this is our agenda this is what we're going to try to cover today um the data space um i don't know if you've done your research or you know if you haven't well that's why we're here there are different ways you can get into you know the data space there's data analysis which people generally consider as one of the easiest as a learner, it might not be to you because you are thinking, why is somebody giving me this to do? But once you get into the industry, you will know that data analysis is one of the easiest. There's data engineering, there's data science, there's machine learning, there's artificial intelligence, and so on and so forth. Um, and let me be a motivational speaker and tell you that you can actually start from data analysis and grow into every other thing. You can now decide, like now I've 
I've come to understand that I love SQL so much. So I'm trying to branch into data engineering um, because I use a lot of SQL for data engineering. I do it at work already. So I'm already thinking I probably would grow in there. Um, if I wake up tomorrow and decide, you know what? Python seems interesting and I think R is interesting. I can go into science. Um, if and that's the thing about being in the data space, you can they are very the tools you learn are transferable. I do um, a a Twitter space every two weeks. I have another one coming up soon where we talk about these things. They are very transferable. Someone that has worked as a data analyst before can actually work with things like actually if they worked SQL a lot, they can go and do things like SSIS, things like ETL, data warehousing, and so on and so forth because they already have the basics you know, from the SQL that they, they know and have been using and they can move it into engineering. So just have just have it at the back of your mind that it, data analysis doesn't have to be your stop. It doesn't have to be where you're not going to say, uh, you know, I'm not doing it again. You can branch into, you can enjoy machine learning. If you're someone that enjoys statistics, statistics is not my greatest suit. So I don't bother myself, but you can enjoy machine learning. You can enjoy artificial intelligence if you know if you're if you're that person. So just I want you to always think broad, always, you know. Think possibilities, never. Challenges, there are challenges, but think possibilities. Um, so in simple terms, what's data analysis It's basically turning a raw data into useful and applicable insights. What does that mean? Someone comes to you now and gives you a spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet, and says, you know what? This is the this data shows you all the customers that we've had since 1992. But I don't know how many males, how many females I want to know. I don't know how many, I don't know how many employees we've had over the years, I want to know. I don't know the number of orders we've placed over the years, I want to know. I don't know the progression of our um of our profit over the years, I want to know. Basically, that's data analysis. Using raw data to give applicable insights, useful insights. Um Someone says to me sometimes um, that, you know, that sometimes as a data analyst, your work doesn't just stop at giving insights. Sometimes if those insights are put into good use by the company, like you give them the insights and you say, you know what, this is the progression of what you've done. For example, you work in media and they've done advertising and you're like, you know what, this this particular campaign did better than this campaign. Maybe there was something. Is it that you targeted the right audience for this campaign? I'm going to talk a lot like a like a professional it's not because i'm gluten it's just because that's how i know how to explain things <laughs> so if you guys don't understand me just draw me back please okay i'm gonna be using words sometimes i forget that i'm teaching um so if they come and they're like oh this campaign doesn't did not do better like i did better than this one and they're like, okay, what did we do better? You know, as a data analyst, you can say, oh, you know, I can see that this audience, you targeted this audience rather than this one. You targeted this um, this um, demography. So is that is it demography the word I'm looking for? No, um, Mediterranean, not American. What's what's the word for that thing? That there's a word for it. Oh, let me dig. Anyway, let's say, for example, you targeted like the Mediterranean area is rather than the North American area. And I can see that, you know, that's what a data analyst does. And then when you tell that to the team that handles the campaign and they're like, OK, you know what? Let's give it a try. Let's do the same thing that we did here and put up, put out another campaign. And it works and they get more views. They get more sales. You've impacted. You've added value to that company automatically from just giving insights. So you are a big deal. Someone was like, someone said to me recently that um, a, a recruiter called him and said, oh, she's recruiting for the government, for the police, and that he was just laughing. And I remember my other friend was like, why are you laughing? You don't know that everyone in this UK, every single department in this UK needs data analysts. So don't stop at trying to just get into the big, big tech, big core. Sainsbury, they need a data analyst. Asda in Nigeria, ShopRite needs a data analyst. Um, what was it called? I'm trying to think of other places in Nigeria. Um, just right, they need data analyst. Um, Apple stores die in Nigeria, they need data analyst. Um, you know, 
different people every like every department every industry you can think of now they need a data analyst so think broad health sector they even those ones joke they need it more than everybody else um and then again telling a story that's why i said i want everyone to have a medium account you can learn how to start tweaking your story writing properly having him putting it out there for people to read and see what they can understand you even be amazed that sometimes what you are what you think you are portraying is not what another person is understanding you know and that way you can also understand the way people think it's also a lot of psychology as well um process of analyzing raw data into actionable intelligence um like i've, I've just given an example of how that happens in the real world um cleaning changing and processing raw data now why data analysis um it's just basically to answer these simple questions for the business and for your clients why how much when time money so basically save costs make them more money and save them time okay you will get to understand these three things as we go along um some good to know you cannot do insights without data I feel like I don't know if that's obvious, but basically what that's saying is that if a company, let's say, for example, Zara has noticed a drop in their sales for the last two years. Um, there's Zara in Nigeria, no? Um, I'm so sorry, I've, I've forgotten a lot of Nigerian brands. Um, let's say, for example, yeah, maybe ShopRite have noticed a drop in Shop is everything coming to my head. I like food. That's me for you guys to know. I like food. Um, shop sales have dropped for the last two years, for example. We cannot give them insights. We cannot tell them why that is happening without data. So that's why data is very important. And that's why you, I want you to start understanding that you as a data analyst, that's one of the reasons why you are key to every business everything even small scale businesses okay as a data analyst attention to detail i'm going to check this a lot i need to emphasize on this i'm going to check it this is another soft skill everybody needs to have as simple as they tell you my business requirement is total sales and you think some of sales is how you want to name it as as minute as that, it can confuse your stakeholders. As minute as that seems like, oh, is it not just a difference, difference in names? It can confuse us. It can maybe not confuse them. They probably have an idea of what you're saying, but they told you total sales. Put it as total sales. Attention to details. Same beyond, and that's what your work as a data and same beyond what the normal eyes or every normal person would see please it's so it's so important i cannot even overemphasize on that it is so important for every business stakeholder client the most important thing i think i said this earlier to know notes is how can i help my business make more money how can i help my clients make more money how can i save them additional cost how can i save them time i remember when i was doing my interview and i said you know my my, my head of team we were talking and she said something and i was like oh is that but you know is that one of the most important things that one of the values i bring to you is saving you time and i remember when i resumed i was doing i was doing something i was working on a particular project and it was just, it was annoying me because Excel was just annoying me and it was just taking me time. And I just closed it off and I did it in SQL. And then um, I said, I went, I gave her a presentation and she was like, I was waiting for you to actually do that because you're very big up on time. And I'm like, yeah, because that's why I'm a data analyst. I'm not here to waste. So you could have easily gone to meet maybe an accountant to help you to be doing it. This is not to the little accountants sorry i take it back but if i literally going to meet somebody else you know to be doing it one by one one by one for you you brought me on board because you felt if i bring this person on board it will save me time they know what they're doing they are professionals in their work right so that's one of the things you need to be able to save your company time 
even if they used to, let's say, for example, they used to do things manually and it used to take them five hours and you come and you're like, I can automate this thing and it will take us less than two hours. You save them three hours. If they had, if they were paying a contractor of 500 pounds, this is not a good thing to say because you are making a contractor lose money. But if they were paying a contractor of 500 pounds or 700 naira, no, sorry, 500. <laughs> What? Sorry, 900 to 500. Calculate it. What's 5,000 naira every hour to do that one thing, right? And it used to take that person five hours. And you come here like, I can automate this and I can get it done in two hours. Once you automate it, you've saved that company 45 times three and 500 times three, one five, and 45k times three. Do you understand? So have that at the back of your mind that when you're doing insights, when you're doing working on data, one of the core things is to make my company money, to save them additional cost and to save them time. Now, process. What is the process that you have to go through as a data analyst? What are the key things that you always have to have at the back of your mind? Ask the right questions. We call this business requirements or this is this this I would say is the number one business rule. And the reason why this is very important is because if you're given a data set, right? Sometimes you if you eventually decide to do contract jobs, you will meet clients that will tell you, oh, um, this is the data. In fact, someone got that recently and I, I told him I was like, go back and I add extra charge to what they gave you because this is raw data they, you can tell a data engineer did not work on this by the way the progression is a data engineer would work on the, would be the one to um, fix the data into the columns and the tables that are supposed to be in a big industry or in a big company in a company where they actually have a data team um you will not have to do everything yourself but they will be the one to fix everything into where it's supposed to be. That's called data engineering. Basically, kind of arranging the data. I don't want to say clean because sometimes a lot of data engineers, they don't clean the data. They leave it for data analysts to do. So they arrange it in a, in a, in a place where you guys will understand that when, once you start doing SQL and all of those things, you understand what I'm saying. I know it sounds like gibberish now, but they will arrange it and sort of formulate, put the, put the data set together for you. Um, and then, you are you as a data analyst will be the one to do the other work so sometimes if you work for a company that has a data team it's very good for data analysts and data engineers to work together because then you can tell him no don't do that column that way don't add it that way this is what i want you to this is what i want to see and a lot of times that can save you time because they would have done a lot of cleaning and arranging for you we, you don't worry you would understand when we get there so if they give you a data set and they're like, oh, we just know that we want to know the man versus woman. Trust me, people can give you that. And always, please, this one, I can say it with my full chest. Always have it at the back of your mind that your stakeholders don't know what they want. Oh, in fact, I feel like I need to, I need to be able to see my face. Have it at the back of your mind that your stakeholders do not, they don't know what they want. They can come to you today and tell you they want five things. And you're already working on those five things and they can come to you tomorrow and say, you know what, that number four, I think is useless. It is your role as a data analyst to help them see the light and say, you know what, no, that number four is useful. However, if you want me to add something else, I can. It is your, and the reason why I said that is because it will make your life so much easier when you are able to think like a stakeholder, reason like them, and sort of drive their path. If not, you will get frustrated. I assure you. Take it from someone who has experienced it. Stakeholders change their mind every two seconds. And sometimes they don't even know what not. They, they will tell you, oh, we think this is how it is. And then you're like, oh, okay, boy, it's not working. And they'll come and be like, ah, no, we found out that that's not how it is. Oh, it's the other way around. So you, as a data analyst, you need to be very, you need to get to a point where you know what you're doing and you can actually guide, guide them, hold their hand to show them like, okay, this is what to do. This is what we're going to do. This is basically, you need to get to that point. Okay. So 
ask the right questions query them when they send you that data set query first of all query the data set on your own i say to you people like if you're able to write out 15 to 20 different questions from a data set you're on a good path and the reason is because the psychology will come into play for you and you will think of all the possible maybe you you will not entirely know everything but you must have thought of so much for you to be able to put down that 15 to 20 okay and then that way you can start qu querying the data querying why ask them i told you my friend got a job because he was asking questions ask them why why do you want this column why do you want that why do you want to see this what is this going to do for you um if i give you this insight what do you plan on using it to do ask, ask questions see they will not accept i mean that's tricky because some people they don't like to be query they don't like to ask questions but you need to actually be able to stand your ground and say see for me to be able to do my work i need i need you to ans answer me like i need you to understand that these questions this particular stage is very important so don't be afraid one thing i've learned with we nigerians especially those of us that have come into the uk is the fear of asking questions i had it when i started as well i didn't used to ask a lot of questions because i thought ah it was it will seem like i'm talking back at them until i i had the conversation in my one-to-one -one with my manager and he was like no i actually want you to ask me the most ridiculous questions ask it because that ridic ridiculous question can lead us to a solution we've probably been looking for and we didn't know that we had you know so ask the questions that's what business requirement is that's what business that's what gathering is you're basically gathering the important things to you to solve their problem okay what type of data analysis analysis would you be using there are different types what data are you planning on analyzing is it a media data is it a financial data set is it an innovation data set is it a, is it a tech data set is it a fintech data set is it um is it um a health data set have a look into it what insights are they looking these are questions you, you need to ask yourself and you need to ask you know as much as you as you go you need to ask your stakeholders as well what insights are they looking to get what's the best way to communicate these insights to them all of these things are important ask yourself ask the right questions and then you can prepare the data also known as data collection sometimes you would need to actually gather your data yourself it, there's something called i think i added it to your assignment data scrapping i'm not sure if i did yep i want you guys to figure out what that is um in your assignment um but you, you sometimes you will be the one to look for data yourself you know they'll just tell you oh this is what we're trying to achieve help us to just figure it out so sometimes you'll be the one to go and collect the data some companies they already have it stored you'll be the one to go and sort of log into it download it and so on and so forth find out where the data to be used is stored internally externally understand the metrics the metrics and the dimensions we'll get into that um understand what metrics they use for media for example cost per click click through rate um impressions things like that are metrics dimensions are a bit different understand what which of them you know are to be used where the team saves the data if you'll be getting it from surveys there are some I, I i got a role for you gov i didn't accept it though for you gov and they are, they are a questionnaire they're a survey company what they do is they put surveys together and then they collate the surveys and then they give insights and give um, analysis on it sometimes if that's what you're going to do you need to know as well and then you move on to process which is cleaning your data and I can assure you as a data analyst, this will generally take at least 60 to 65% of your time, of the entire time they are gonna to use to work on that data set. Because if you don't get this right, you would, you would always have to go back because sometimes something will not work. And you're just thinking to yourself, oh, what's going on? It's because you've not done your cleaning properly. Look for errors, look for inaccuracies, look for inconsistencies, look for missing values, look for null values, duplicate records, blanks. There's so much to look for. Um, there's so much to look for um, when, when you, sorry, 
when you're working with your data. So you need to understand the process, understand. Um, we would we would do practicals next. You understand how best to clean your data, um, and then you analyze. You know this is why you carry out your basic data analysis using whatever tool. If you're using Excel, if you're using SQL, if you're using Python, R. This is where you find. You know you do that, um, and then you find relationships, find trends, find patterns. That's another thing as a data analyst that you're going to do. You look at, for example, they give you a data set that has dates, and maybe the date is over a quarter, and you notice that probably every so for for companies that probably are very more seasonal seasonal means that they sell products during like valentine christmas and that's when their sales skyrocket it is your place as a data analyst to identify those patterns and say you know what every q4 q4 is quarter four every q4 we've noticed that your sales jump from 40 percent to 70 percent so um or um for example stores like zara i use zara a lot and i don't even shop as much there anyway for stores like zara maybe they need to come and employ me sorry this is me outside thinking for stores like zara for example let's say you know they notice that every q3 they sell more female boots than they do male. It is your work as a as a data analyst to notice those patterns, you know, and communicate it. Those are your insights. Communicate it to your stakeholders. Okay. And um basically you're using it to help them solve the business needs and make them better. Understand what the data is telling you. I, I told my former student, and I'm gonna say this again. When you get a data set, it is okay for you to take two days. In fact, I remember when my mentor told me this thing for the first time. It was like, Mide, you know that it's okay for you to even take a week to understand the data sets that you're working with before you start, before you even touch it, before you clean, before you do anything. It's okay. It is very okay because you know what that does? It shortens the time frame that you're going to use to do your cleaning and everything else because you already know what you're working with. It is okay. Understand your data set take the time to look through it, scale through it, look at it, close your laptop, go and do something else, come back and look at it with another eye. It is okay. People do it. In fact, I remember I was saying to my friend yesterday that sometimes you'll find data analysts, we chill sometimes because <laughs> all we do is we get the data set. We look, 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 look at it. We can, I can sit down like this, just looking at my laptop and I'm looking at the data set. And somebody else is coming and just looking at, you have been looking at this thing for five hours. What's going on? I'm the one that knows what I'm looking at. And I'm the one look, I know that I know what I'm searching for. I'm, I know what pattern I'm trying to make in my head. And then I just spend another three hours and I'm done. What I probably have told my, I shouldn't be saying this. What I've probably said, oh, it might take me two weeks. I probably will get it done in two days. And then I can chill for the remaining two weeks. And I'll tell you this for free, especially in the UK company. I'll say it to you. Even my manager said it to me. Never undersell the timing it will take you to get something done. If they come to you and they're like, this data set, I want to get this from it. It is extremely urgent. OK, I'll get it to you in 72 hours. You can, you might be able to get it all in 24. But the trick to that is if you're writing SQL code, for example, and maybe you didn't do something well, I assure you that sometimes the error can last you five days. So if you go on the cell, or when I say on the cell, if you go and tell them, oh, I think it will take me 24 hours, and you get to that point, you will look like you don't know what you're doing, even if you're trying to impress. So it is okay if you think something will take you one week, add one week extra. What do you beat you? It's the time you say you finish, you finish. And they will respect it because they know that you're doing your job. As long as you're doing your job, please do your job. That's it. Okay. Um, and then you share. So data inter interpretation, telling them, oh, this is what we've got, gotten from it, blah, 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 blah. And then act, insights you give to them, what they can do, how they can improve, what they should remove, what they should add, and so on and so forth. And then ETL, 
this is a different ball game entirely. But what it means is extraction, transformation, and loading. This is more engineering focused, but sometimes analysts do just a tiny little bit of this, just a tiny little bit. Um, okay. And then there are different types of analysis. I think I gave you an assignment on this. I want you guys to read up. So all of the assignments I've given you, for the ones that are practical, you show me the practical ones. For these ones, you put them into a Word folder and submit it to your assignment Excel aspect. Um, so we have the descriptive, we have the exploratory, inferential, predictive, casual, mechanistic they are so that's just a lot i want you to guys to go and read about it understand it and you are coming next class to teach me so on friday you're going to teach me what and i'm going to call people at random so if you don't do it i will know you're going to tell me what predictive analysis is you teach me please let's know that it might look like i'm the teacher but i'm also here to learn okay so you're going to teach me too as i'm Talking, talking, you will teach me stuff as well. Tools, there's a lot. Excel, SQL, Python, R, Power BI, Tableau, Luca, Click View. If I start mentioning all the tools, and I'm going to give this advice for free. For free. Once you're done with this class, if you see that you as a person, and as a data analyst, Excel is your strong suit. Please, I beg you with the love of God and anything else that you serve, stick to it, master it. I feel like I've been saying my friend, my this a lot, and it's because I am a very big believer of networking, so I have a vast amount of friends um and that's because networking has helped me a lot in my career a lot so i don't joke with it so when you see me say i spoke to this person it's because i'm always i am an introvert but when it comes to networking i'm an extreme extrovert because networking has gotten me into rooms that i normally would not dream of so i i don't joke with it but back to the point, if you know Excel is your strong suit, I mean, you've seen that out of everything you've done, I don't really like Excel. I don't really like, you know, Excel. Please, with the love of everything you have, master it. Let it, see, there's, there's a confidence you get when you go into, a, into an interview and you know that it's Excel prone or Excel based and you know that that's your baby. There is a level of confidence you would ooze. You will get there. You will understand what I'm saying. There's a level of confidence you ooze that you know that there's nothing you want to say that I don't know. It's the way I feel about SQL. I say to people, I can sit down. If I'm serious, it's just that sometimes I'm not serious. I'm just pressuring my phone. But if I actually sit down, if you give me an error and I sit down with my SQL, one hour, I will solve it. Max two hours, I will solve it. I look at SQL, look at what the error is telling you and i'll tell you what you what to do because i already know it and that's how i got my job and that's how i'm going to get every other job because sql is my baby i have come to understand that this one this is where i i am a king and i will remain here and you see that gosh i know someone who is who is an excel guru he ends I don't like to say this because you realize they are the bobo people, but it's the truth. He has 800 pounds every month. I remember the day he told me, we're just in. And I was like, oh, I'm broke. Oh, ah, I need another job. I was like, ah, you want to play SQL? Why are you? He was saying in your brother, you that you're a king in SQL. Why are you struggling to get another job? Like, and I said, but you, yeah, you're doing only one job. now. I say, yes, now because I'm getting 800 pounds per day. Per, uh, per, per day. I said, eh? He said, eh? I said, eh, he said, eh. I said, eh, he said, eh. I said, 800. The someone that's in the US. Ah, oh, Kabaya. <laughs> Please, my point is once you figure out what it is, if it's Power BI, if I go on Google now, let's do a test. Let's go to Google just right now.
See, what did I put? Just Power BI. Forget all this name. Oh. This is what I tell my forget all this name. All this name that I'm telling you. Forget it. Because a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times, the name is not what it is. It's not. It's not. Okay. Look at the job description. That's what you should look at. Focus on the job description. Is see. See. If I type SQL, SQL analyst job, I will see. I will see. See, they call it developer, but you're not developing shit. You're just using Power BI a lot. See. See, no, I don't want you to see. So that it's not be as if, see. So it's not that language is talking too much. Please. Whatever you know that you're a king at, hold it. That's, it's good to have an idea about everything else. Like, no, I know how Python works, for example. I know how Tableau works, for example. Sorry. I know how Tableau works, for example. It's good. It's, it's not a bad thing. But I know that SQL is my baby. So when I'm looking out for jobs, I'm looking out for more jobs that I know that if I enter that interview, the only reason why they will not take me is because probably they don't think I can work, like I fit into their culture. Maybe I'm a bit playful and they like people that are too serious. Maybe, for example, I, I, I ask questions like, are you a, do, do you micromanage? I don't work well in a micromanaging environment. I'm a king. I don't need to be begging you. You need me. I don't. I mean, I need your money, but you need me. So if you don't, if I'm not going to take your job. I'm sorry. It's not pride. It's just what I know. Right. So if you know that that's what you're good at, please stick to it. Introduction to Excel. I kind of want us to start this. Because we're going to go into class two after break. So I'm just going to run through this and just talk about it. And then after break, we'll start it. Why Excel? What are the key things we use Excel for? How to get the most of Excel? Why Excel? It's one of the tools. In fact, if you're in the UK, I don't know about Nigeria. I think even in Nigeria, they use a lot of Excel because my friend was, when she was trying to get something done, she had to impute it from Excel as well. But in the UK, you can't run away from Excel. Even if your company is, you know, automated, tools driven, one team in that company will still use Excel because they will tell you that they are not in an analyst, so they don't need to be learning SQL. So it's you by yourself that will have to figure out how to maybe automate it. So you cannot run. I said this to people a lot. If you sit down with Excel and you know Excel, ha, you're going to make money. Free money. NHS, especially. Oh, sugar, 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 sugar. NHS, it will make free money. You're not in lounge. You're making the thing that will take you 30 minutes will take someone that's working in NHS like and their admin will take them maybe three hours. You you would have made 350 pounds. Freely. Just just because you know what to do as an analyst. You know tricks. Okay. Um what are the key things we use it for? Analysis um ETL it will use it does a lot of ETL a lot. And because Actually, if you use Microsoft tools for everything, so Microsoft SQL, Power BI, it's all Microsoft based. So it's easy for you to integrate. It's easy for you to sort of link everything together. How to get the most of Excel. Understand that you can never know it all. I say this a lot. Excel is not my favorite tool. I used to like it, but it has shown me paper. So it's not my favorite tool. Um, but I don't really hate it. You know, but I would rather not use it. But um, understand that you cannot know everything. Understand that you would learn every day with Excel. Understand that you will Google a lot. Understand that you will Google a lot and not find answers. And somebody that probably has just gone through that error before, that challenge before, we don't answer. Um, did I mention Stack Overflow? I don't think I did. Please, Afiz, add that to the the things yeah you haven't mentioned it yet yeah yes please add that to the things that they have oh, to open no problem 
Thank you. Guys, you also have to open a Stack Overflow account. Um, it would help you a lot. I know it seems like I'm giving you a lot to do. You would appreciate it in years to come. That's all I'm going to say. What about Cargo? We don't want to ask Cargo as well. Please right. just help me add everything that you remember. Because it'd be like I say, my brain is foggy right now. Yeah, Please help me to uh -huh. add it. Thank you. Um, but it's very important. Um, Afiz was in my former class, by the way, my first class. And yeah, it's very important. Um, single entity data. I want us to get into this when I get into the next class. When I get into the next session. All of this, you would understand it better when I open a data set for you. OK, so let's say we are done. Um, any questions? What do you guys? I want people to throw questions at me. Let's talk um, so that we can start. I hope I'll have that will be enough time, but then I feel like some of you guys might be tired or we might maybe we should go on break now, actually. OK, any questions? Guys? We'll go on break 11.45 to return 12 o'clock. Things that will work. Um, unmute yourselves. Turn on your camera. Ask me questions. Maybe you've been seeing something about data analysis and you're like, ah, you know, ask me questions. Yes, sir. Please go ahead, Mr. Adifalari. You can raise up your hand so that I can call you in order. Uh, yeah, I just want to make a comment about what you said earlier about uh, Excel. And um, Excel is the king in Nigeria because. Uh, I was in finance in Nigeria for about almost a decade, yeah, a decade actually, and um, He's my everything I used in Nigeria was Excel. It was when I got and I started applying for finance gigs and everything, and I realized that, okay, in, in this part of the world, they go beyond Excel, because quite honestly, the knowledge on the knowledge on Excel, you cannot, you, can, you can't exhaust it. What you can do on Excel is infinite. Let me put it like that. So in Nigeria, Excel is like, though maybe now some new boutique firms now will probably be feeling funky, trying to incorporate Power BI, SQL, and all those things. But Excel is was like the bread and butter for for data analysis. And uh, data analysis is something that I didn't even know I wanted to do, but it formed part of the bulk of the work I did because like I always tell people, in, even in finance. 90% of the work is research, 9% is execution, and 1% is risk management. So that 90% is you basically sifting through data to know what is good, what your, probably your investment manager, your portfolio manager wants to see that will help you make a better decision and everything. So I was thrown into the deep end of um, data analysis without even, uh, you know when you apply for a job, and okay, I just want to go in finance or investment. And before you know it, they start giving you things that wait, 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 wait. This is not what I signed up for. So in for a long time I struggled with it because statistics was my thing. Um, was something I really enjoyed, but I just wanted to make money basically. You know when people are talking about making money in stock in the stock market, I'm like, I just want to make money. Don't stress me with all these analysis and anything at all. <laughs> but one thing I have to say that in the last um on R that you've been talking, like I was even telling my partner that I just realized actually that I've been running away from this thing for so long. But what I actually enjoy doing, because I enjoy working with numbers, anything that is worth when we're working, then anything that is report or research, and the report writing of the research, miss me with it. I always delegated it to someone else, but the data part is the one I was most That's interested so important. In. It's so important that you know that. Oh my God, it is so important that you know that because some people are amazing at insights. We will talk about that. Some people are so amazing at insights. My team, we have a sub team that is called Insight Analyst. They don't code. They just take mm -hmm. all we've done and they give insights. They yeah. Create the, the report. Yeah, they don't code. Yeah. 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 Because I, and I knew that because I worked with someone that was like that. In fact, the guy is in the UK now. We used to uh, tease him in the office that he talks too much. There's someone that I can get started. This guy read uh, Greek engineering or something, but if you get him started on economic policies, this guy can talk from beginning to end and give you different insight from the topic that you probably would not even think of. But me, give me the data, I'll clean up the data for you. I'll tell you that, okay, this is what I see from the data. Then whatever you want to make from, whatever you want to. Have. So 
I just I've enjoyed the last the one uh, chat and everything. And it just made me realize that I've probably just been running away from something that uh, was dropped into my laps. Fortunately, uh, the way it was dropped into my laps, the Nigerian company kind of system is they will employ you to do more and not pay you for it. So maybe that's what didn't really made me didn't really make me want to do it then. Because you employ me for something, you are giving me something more strenuous to do. I don't want to pay me the value of that. But UK is something that has changed that idea for me. That's why I signed up for this class. To so you know what? I think it's high time I take this serious and not just be playing with it. And you know, but good job so far. And I also it was the Excel that made me raise my hand to just talk about that. Excel is really really big in Nigeria. I I think they are moving beyond Excel right now to also incorporate other tools, but Excel is still like the foundation of everything. And I don't know about the UK yet. It I'm is. In the UK market. In the UK, it is. It is. Yeah. It's so frustrating, yeah. actually, because in my mind, I'm like, my, my company is one of the um, automated driven companies in the world. I don't like to talk about my company because not like I don't like to, but people always think I'm trying to brag. But anyway. But we still use Excel. And I remember <laughs> I remember when I started my work, um, the first month, you know, they were giving me, because we had not yet gotten to a point where we could get APIs to connect to the platforms and so on and so forth. So they were giving me a lot of Excel, like, oh, clean this, do this. And I was just there happily. I remember my senior, my lead developer was just looking at me like, why are you excited using Excel? And I'm like, ah, oh, Excel is amazing. I was just like, ew. <laughs> I was, like, oh. I was like, I hate Excel for the life of me. Everyone on my team, except my head of the head of team and business director, hates Excel. As it, and unfortunately, they've passed it on to me because I liked it initially until I saw that I can understand why you hate Excel. What I would do in SQL in five minutes, you, you and Excel can be. And the funny thing, and that's why I said know your <coughs> know your tool. As much as I might do it in five minutes, another person that is a guru, I've, my business director has changed my mindset so much. I can be struggling. I'll just say, I'll call his name. I'm like, I'm struggling. And he will just come, keyboard. He will not use keyboard shortcut. Bang, 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 bang. And he's done. And I'm like, and then when it comes to SQL, he'll come and be like, hola, yeah, I'm having a problem now. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, oh, it's very simple. You just need to do this. And he's like, you see, we work well. I know well, I know a lot I'm doing in Excel. You know what you're doing in Excel. So if you know your strength, oof, it's going to be so amazing. And I, like you said about the insights, it was one of the reasons why I got a promotion um, six months after because they realized that I love to talk. I, I can't say you anything. I, they call me the negotiator, negotiator in the team. I can say you the water that you have already bought for five pounds. I can come back and sell it to you for 10 pounds. You will not know. I will just be talking. I will just be talking. I will just be talking. You will not be there and be listening to me. You will get tired. You will buy it. So they had to tell me, you know, they had to move me to a more client-focused um, 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 role because they were like, I know that you enjoy coding, but maybe you are good. You know how to talk to people. You know how to create relationships. You have that. Stakeholder management is also very key. Knowing how to make people feel important. I remember I was saying to someone that it's not just by sitting on your on your decks and sending emails. I think I learned that from my very my third job in Nigeria. I remember my boss was saying to me then, it's good to write emails. It's good, but what that makes you be to other people is you're robotic they don't know you but the moment you go and create personal relationship you go and speak to them how are you what's going on how is your day and me i know how to do that even when i'm having a rough day i will still go and tell you how are you but i want you to get my job done you know and they come to me and they're like they always say to my team like if you want to get something fast go and meet me day to go and meet the team because i will go i will send you email and i'll come and sit down and sit with you i have work oh, I don't mind sitting with you for one hour, but guess what? In that one hour, my own job will be done and then I can go and do my work. Meanwhile, other people are waiting for emails for three days. Nobody is responding to them. It's just the way life is. It's just the way people are. Once they are overwhelmed, they don't want to be, they will just read your email and pass or forget. But if you go and meet them, you have a relationship with them. I remember there was one time I went to one of the other teams. Immediately she saw me coming. She was like, I'm actually already working on it. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Thank you. And she was like, no, I just knew you were going to come. 
and that's it like so they already know me so most times my team will send me to people that they think is difficult you know so it's very very important to know yourself so i want us to go for a break now we'll be back by 12 and then we'll start class we'll start practicals okay go and get yourself a cup of coffee i actually need to order coffee or a cup of tea or hot chocolate or milo for those in nigeria that's what our chocolate is here okay? anyway go and eat something take a walk and we'll be back by 12 okay for those that will still be here i'll try and be playing music but you might not hear it sure I mean, it's gospel I listen to. Let it not be that. I'm saying it now. Let it not be that.
Welcome back, guys. Can you hear me? Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. Just going to wait. Yes. If you are here, raise up your hands, please. If everyone is so that we can know that everybody is here and continue. Amazing, everybody's here. Okay, 11 people. We're waiting on favor to be. Okay, hopefully they join us. I'm here, I raised my hand. Pim was, Pim was already there. She's... Oh, okay. <laughs> Why is, I can't see her hands raised though. She anyway, mm -hmm. okay. All right, amazing. Let's get into class now. Just one minute. I'm just going to lower everybody's hand. It's good, oh God of mercy. It's good. It's good. It's good. Um, oh, as well, guys, I was going to mention, please, if you haven't sent um, your number to the number provided, the WhatsApp number provided so that you can be added to the WhatsApp group. Please, please, and please try to do that after class today so that everyone can be in the WhatsApp group. I'm going to be more focused on that group in terms of I will be answering questions there a lot more than personal questions. So if you have questions, dump it there. And um, that's why Afiz is also there in case I'm a little busy and because he's been through the class and he understands what's going on. So he'll be able to help. So please, if you haven't, please send your WhatsApp number, send a message to that, um, to that WhatsApp number provided in the email that was sent out. Okay. Amazing. Um, sorry, I'm just going to drink some water. Welcome back to class. Oh, oh, sorry. No, no. Sorry. Um, my table is a standing table, so every time I bump, it starts to go up. Um, welcome back to class. Let me share my screen. Right. <clears throat> okay, so I've dropped the social media handles. I, I The YouTube one, I'm thinking I'm going to send it to you via email, and that's because I'm going to make the videos um, only accessible to people who have the link. So I want to sort of add your email links to it. Um, gonna figure that out after the class um but i've dropped the social media handles please as much as possible try <clears throat> to follow the handles tweet your experience if you're enjoying the class if you're not enjoying the class tweet your experience if you're not enjoying the class tell me why do because that would help um but yes please tweet your experiences and let's start this was supposed to be you know but we'll do this during your tutorials. Also, um, I'm going to get the team to send out the Friday tutorial session. So I'm just going to talk about that quickly. The Friday tutorial session, I'm not going to champion it. <clears throat> when you start doing your assignments, what I'm going to do, I probably will work with Afiz on this, is we are going to group you. So you would have, we are 16, we will have four groups for each. And I'm going to take people across board. And the idea 
behind having that group is so that you can help yourselves. So when I give assignments, if any of you is struggling within your group and somebody else has solved it, you can help each other. OK, and you can say, oh, I'm struggling with this. You guys can have it if you want to. You can decide to. I'll send out an Excel sheet to tell you what group you are in. If you want to, you can decide to have your own WhatsApp group. It depends on how you guys want to work. But what I want to see is the teamwork in, in that, because those are the things that you know, they require for references. So I want to see that teamwork where you guys are helping each other. And again, like I said, that Friday tutorials, I, I the team will create the link. However, you are championing it. I might join in once or twice or three times. Or for example, if you guys are going, like you're having serious problems, Afis is not also able to help you. And then I can come in. And you guys are like, Midday, this one has passed us, then I can come in. But the idea with that tutorials is because once I finish, four hours is not enough. You know, once we finish with these four hours, once you've gone to do your assignments, you have that Friday to look at your assignments together, talk about what you've learned, what you did not learn. Please, for every group, I'm going to assign someone to be the head. I'm going to ask who is participating and who is not participating. I'm very serious about this. I'm going to ask because I want to know. You're not just, I know that somebody will be like, ah, maybe what's your own now? Maybe I paid the money. Let me not be serious. No. You know, I, I'm going to actually do this next class and next batch. People are going to start telling me why they want to be in the class. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to say this in a rude or prideful way. I'm not concerned about your 400 pounds. That's not the passion. That's not that's not the mission and my vision for data focus. I'm not concerned. The 400 pounds is is so that people can feel like they are losing something if they are not serious. I'm not concerned about your 400 pounds. I'm more concerned about what you're going to get, how you're going to be, who you're going to be going into the job market after this session, after this course. The 400 pounds. I don't even want to begin to start telling you how my mentor does not approve of that fee and thinks it's too low. That's how much that's to tell you. And a lot of you did not pay 400 pounds. You know, that's to tell you that that's not my goal. My goal is the people who the people are becoming after my course. What are they gaining after my course? That's my goal. So it's very key. Team team spirit. I want to see it. Ability to solve skills. Um, critical thinking. I want to see all of that in the assignments and the projects I'm going to be giving out. And that's why I'm giving out those projects. I, I have attended teasers where they don't care about all of these things. They will just teach you what they want to teach you. They will allow you ask questions. I even know someone who is charging £1,500 and he's just emailing, he uses to communicate with his people, right? But that's not my mission. This thing I'm doing is very stressful. I'm going to talk, but that's what I want to do. You know, that's that's my own value. That's, I'm more value oriented. I want that to be, my student to be able to say, you know what, I know what I'm doing. You know, that's my that's my goal. Do you understand? So I want to see that team spirit. I'm going to break you into groups of fours. You're going to do your assignments together, talk to each other, your tutorials, work with each other. Oh, ah, this one, when I was doing it, the Excel, the Hango, somebody that is good in Excel will be like, ah, no, this is how you're supposed to do it. Sometimes I will join just to hear, but I won't talk. And sometimes I won't join. But if you guys need me, you know, you can call on me. And everyone must also attend the tutorial session. I joined you. I did not join you. It is compulsory. Okay. Let's go into class. I know that it feels like, oh, Mide, you're too rigid. You're, mm -mm, I'm not. By the end of this class, you would appreciate all of these things and you would understand that it is from a place of having done it, made mistakes and understood how to sort of move forward. And that's why I'm I'm dishing that that wealth of knowledge to you guys so, under, so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. OK, amazing. Let's start. So agenda, introduction to Excel. 
Excel for data analysis, general knowledge, and then we'll do some formulas. I think I also, let me quickly confirm that. I'm not sure if I did. I think I uploaded, if not, let me just upload it now, the roadmap that I want us to go through. Um, again, once you guys have access, you would get access to all of this. I want to open that for us, the roadmap we're going to go through and the things we're going to do. So you have the roadmap there. Um, um, so it's just basically going to show you and tell you um, what the things we'll try to cover. I will try to cover some of them. I'm going to send you to go and research on them and then come back and we'll talk about it. You know, you know, you tell me what you've learned and things like that. So you have access to this now. This is what we're going to be doing. This one's ignore because they are um, optional. Um, additional tools that some people are just doing this within the company um, alone because that's what they are more focused. That's what they want to learn. So this is what we're going to do. And then I've broken it down here. So yeah. Um, OK, so let's start. Um, I think I stopped here. I want to talk about a few things here. No, 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 the Excel. Just grind up. Please, if at any point you don't understand, drop the questions. The reason why I say you should drop it and not interrupt me is because I will forget. I forget. I lose my train of thoughts a lot. So just drop the question in the chat. If it's something that Afiz can answer, he would. If not, after class, we'll talk about it and I'll answer. Okay. But please feel free to ask me questions. Um, and this is also part of your assignment. So the ones I've given you before, and this, this is also part of your assignment, please. Um, so single entity data and multi entity data. Who can tell me if you have an idea? If you don't, it's fine. But who can guess what a single entity data? What does it mean when we say single entity data? Anybody? If you don't know, it's fine. But if you want to try, please unmute your mic before I open the data set. Anyone? Yes, no, guesses, no guesses, no? Okay, fine. <coughs> right, a single entity data consists of just one entity, one table. So an entity is also known as a table. And basically what that means is within this table, yes, I can get insights, okay, yes, I can. If I want to, when we start cleaning, I'll show you what I'm saying. I can say, you know, maybe let's say, for example, there was a there was a column here that says gender. I can say, oh, um, within this data set, we have more females than male or we have this percentage of females against this percentage of male. Um, we have like, let's use the ones that are here in city. Let's say we have people, 50 percent of the, the people who are members are living in San Francisco or they're living in California. But in multi-entity data, there are multiple entities, so multiple tables, okay? So the first thing you want to know is an entity and table. An entity is basically this, you know, so this is, so this is a multi-entity. I wanted to show you an example. This is a multi-entity data. And a multi-entity data always has links. We will get to what the links are, but they always link back and forth to each other. So there's always something linking the multi-entity data with, you know, basically there's always something linking them <clears throat> together. A single entity data, however, there's no link. It's just one entity, it's just one table, okay? It's just 
I have just my the names of the people that are members in my society, and I want to get insights from that alone. That's a single table, a single entity data. Multi entity is I have others, I have product, I have um, I have um, shippers, I have employees. You know, those those are tables. Those are names of the tables that has been created in the database. So. That is a multi entity, multi entity data set. OK, so this is a single entity data set. That's the very first thing I want you to know. So are we clear on the difference between a single entity and a multi entity, everyone? This session is more interactive than the first, so I want people to be saying yes, no, OK. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. OK, amazing. Good. Are you come again, ma? I should come again. Amazing. Yes, ma. So single entity. When you hear entity, the word entity also means table. What is a table? Table, let's open word. Sorry, I'm a very, very practical person. So if I'm doing so much, just take me like that. This is, for example, this is a table. This in picture, I like to be very pictorial. So picture your database. A single entity data looks like this. It just has one table. So it's just one table with different, um, I think this is columns. Yeah, with different columns, but it's just one table, okay? If we wanted to do a multi-entity, which is, Entity, like I said, is table. So multi is more than two or two and above. Now, let's say we have a multi-entity table, right? Your multi-entity table will have different, your multi-entity data set, sorry, will have different tables. So you can have a table that is called sales. You can have a table that is called product. You can have a table that is called product. See this place, this Columns. I know you're thinking about it as column, but see them as table, okay? Picture them as table. So under sales, there are now different columns. Just, I know that I'm not doing it right, but okay, let me do it. If I do it, if I do it this way, what does, so you see it, and that way you do it, yeah. But just picture this sales, picture it as a table. Others, this is a table. Product is another table. Um, customers is another table. Employees is another table okay so there are different tables within this data set if for example now so let's say for example now sorry i don't know how to draw my my straight line i'm not like a face my straight lines are very terrible anyway hmm. wow 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 let me do anyway <laughs> Now, let's say this is our database, okay? But in within this our database, it's okay. Oh my God, it's okay. I don't want again. Oh, I don't want. How did he so do this thing? Anyway, so let's say within this um, can you buy? Within this um, within this. This is our database. This thing I've drawn now is our database. And within that database, we have different tables. This this part, that's our table. All these things, these are tables, right? So this is a multi-entity data set, okay? Multi because it has more than one, okay? So this is your data set this is your table in within your database okay so data engineers are the ones that would do this and put everything you know uh, they would pile bring all the data together and be able to say okay actually this one looks like it should be in sales this one looks like it should be in others this one looks like it should be in products and so on and so forth okay so this is your multi-entity data set okay so let's say for example now now, that is multi-entity and then single entity, like I said, this thing is annoying me. Can you give me back my body? 
um can you not do this i want my this thing back <sighs> anyway so this is our that's our multi-entity okay so um single entity one table think about it that way multi different tables do we do we did that help in any way who was person that said they did not understand did that yes, help in any way okay yes, amazing amazing since i'm not in math um okay so that's that's the difference between a single entity and a multi-entity entity is also table is they, they it's it's just it's english showing both okay now what is an attribute an attribute is something that exists within your entity within your table okay you know when i did i shouldn't have even closed that this thing that i did self it was a name because i couldn't figure out how to so you know when i did sales book work book work customers i'm going to do this too right an attribute would now be something called customer name underneath your customer's table okay that's what an attribute is it's just basically identifying putting a name to the different columns that you have within your data set so for example here this is an attribute this is an attribute this is an attribute um customer name this is an attribute this is an attribute okay um in the single entity one as well this is your attribute this is your attribute and so on and so forth is that clear everyone yes yes ma amazing yes it is thank you yes, now if we go into the next thing i want you to know the reason why if you're wondering why am i going through this the reason is because it's in batch you know the, if you understand the first layer it's easy to move on to the second and the third and the fourth okay so the next thing is keys <sighs> this one i'm gonna be hopeful so a key or a code now there is something called a primary key and a foreign key this is very important for a data analyst the reason why i said it is because one thing you should know is the reason why we start with excel is because with once you understand the idea the I think is a big, big advocate of this because when we finished Excel and we went and we moved into um, SQL, I remember he used to message me to say, "Oh, Mide, sure you know that you can actually do this thing that you did in Excel. You can do it in SQL as well." I was like, "Yeah, that's why people should naturally teach Excel first because once you understand the concepts with Excel, you can um, you can do it in every other programming language or every other tool set. You know, so once you understand." The same way I'm going to explain primary key and foreign key is it going to be the same concept. It's going to be the same concept in SQL. It's going to be the same concept in Python if you eventually decide to learn Python. So we have a key and a code. What are they used for? Why do we have them? Identification. Simple and short. Identification. That is why we have them. That is why they were created. Now, if we go back to this, our table, okay, is we have them here, but I want you to, I feel like here, you know, it's already populated, so you can be like, oh, in fact, there's not even primary key here, so actually, but anyway, um, it's over, so you might not, I want you to, I want us to be practical, so let's say we have, what does, employees, so to Martin Sorojo, was, me, I'm very passionate. I always want people to understand. Employee table. Um, customer. I might put customer. Oh, product. Um, product. Um, okay. Now, so let's say we have any, we have this table now, but. 
Now, within these tables, again, like I said, look at them as tables, okay? We can have something called customer's first name, okay? We can have something called customer's first name. We can have another one called customer's last name, okay? These are all attributes. Remember that I said attribute. These are all attributes. We can have what is called um, address. I have what is called phone number. Okay. And then we can have the for the primary key. Mm -hmm. Customer ID or just ID. Now, if as a data analyst now, I already have this customer stable, but I want to show my stakeholders a comparison between the customer and others. So, so for example, I want to show my stakeholders, maybe customer X bought this number of product, or customer X has this total number of orders within our database, okay? Now, again, the reason why I put this, this last is because I want to explain the concept of primary key and foreign key. In this place now, the identificator, is that English correct? The key, the thing, the code that you're going to use to identify this table eh, is this customer ID. Somebody will ask me, oh, Mide, how would I know the key, the primary key within a table? I feel like the best way to answer that question is the unique identification you see that when i opened this immediately i was like oh we don't even have a primary key here there is no unique identification your primary key think about it as unique identification if i open this multi-entity however i can pick all the primary keys across board because there's a unique identification okay this is a primary key, and I can bet that I will see this in another table somewhere. Wait, country code. Right, see? No, this is customer code. Let me see if I'll see country code. Right, see? Country code. However, it is a for it is a primary key here. It is unique. It's a unique identification. It's a number. It's like and um, it's like your um, can I speak any? Your driving, your driver's license um, ID. That is your primary key. It is the primary key. If, if we had a table that had names of people who had um, driver's license, then driver's license ID is the primary key to one person. So my own driver's license number is my own. is, is the primary key within, you know, for example, that table. So it's the unique identification identifier within that table, okay? So think about your primary key as a unique identifier. That's the best way I can, I can explain it. It is a unique identifier. It is that ID that you can tell is unique to the table. Sometimes they are easy for you to see. You just know, like for example, this one says country code. Someone will say, why is country? And then there are always numbers. There are mostly always numbers. Your IDs are mostly always numbers. Um, we generally advise you using things like this or words as your ID. So that's another thing to check. Your Sorry, excuse me. Your IDs are mostly always numbers because I know someone will say, ah, Mide, this is country ISO code. Now, why is it not the primary key? It is in letters. Yes, there's letters here, but this letter says 52790. It's unique. This is country. I can probably see five other US here if I filter. Just going to do that quickly. Don't ask me how because we'll get there. I just want to figure out something. Okay, so it just has one US. Um, let's see. It might not have 
populated things but i just want you to understand that this is a code this is this is more of country this is words okay so you can't exactly you can't exactly um use it as your identification your identifier right but these ones if you look at the numbers even they are unique there is no like this 52782 is not repeated elsewhere okay so that's how you know your your primary keys i would ex we'll get into foreign keys but i want to touch like explain primary keys to a good number um i'm sure that i would find a another foreign key here but this is the primary key so that is your primary key, okay? So if we come here now, this customer ID now will be the primary key for this table. Do we understand the concept of primary key? Can the SSN be, no, it cannot. So is it, um, hmm, it's actually unique to each person because I know social security number is unique to each person. So it's, it's it can be. It can be actually uh, because this is unique to this person. This is unique to this person. It can be, but if I was working on this data set, I would add my ID myself. I would insert a key here and just do ID and just probably do 002, 003 and so on and so forth. I would do that myself. And that's just that's just my personal practice. But yes, this is unique to everybody. So if you want to use it, it's just, I wouldn't advise you use it as your primary key because I'm just trying to imagine taking this into pivot tables and stuff and stuff. I wouldn't advise, I would, I would honestly suggest you know, creating your own. And you can't do that because sometimes data engineers don't, they don't bother about, you know, you can actually, actually they should because that's one of the things that can confuse you as a data analyst if they don't. But if I was working on this, I'll create my own primary key myself. But yes, this can, this can fly as a primary key because it's unique to each person. Okay. It can fly. But then again, it is unique to each person. Now, if, for example, this became a multi-entity, it will be very tricky for you to use this as a primary key because you're not going to be copying social security number everywhere. Do you understand? That's why I, I, I said mm, I wouldn't really, if I was the one, I would not use it. I would just create an, a primary key myself. Okay? But yes. Yes. Um... Okay, so do we all understand the concept? I was going to ask this that question before I saw the questions. Do we all understand the concept of primary key? If you don't, please feel free to draw me back because it's very important. If you don't understand the concepts, so many things will confuse you. So do I'm we all understand? Understand it. Huh? I'm yet to understand it. You are yet to understand it? Yeah. What? What don't you understand about it that would help streamline mm. when I'm explaining again? How you can easily identify the primary key for the okay. data. Yeah. Okay, so I think that one will come with practice. But anyway, um, again, like I said, data engineers will clean this for you. Okay, so see how someone pointed out SSN and I said, Although it might be unique to each person, but I would not advise you use it as a primary key because, again, it's not, it's not unique to that. Yeah, I think that's the best way I can explain it. It's not unique to that table. It is unique to each person. I know I use driver's license number, but don't let that confuse you. I was just trying to figure out a... A real life scenario to explain it okay this is probably unique to each person but it's not unique to the table your primary key is supposed to be unique to your table okay so if i come here and i look at channel then the, these i these numbers are unique to this table okay sometimes some engineers are very nice they will straight go to customer they will call this channel id straight up 
straight. Okay. Some will call it, you know, and so on and so forth. But see how here they've called the channel code. Well, because I've worked with a lot of data set, I am able to easily identify that this is my primary key. Another tricky, not entirely reliable, but like 80 to 85 percent reliable way is to, to know is if I go here and I search channel, OK, there's no channel here. If I go here, you will always find your primary keys are the foreign keys in other table. So I'll get into foreign key. But if I come here and I try to see if there's channel, I have a very bad eyesight. So if you guys see channel, please tell me. I'll be seeing something. I don't know that I'm, I'm seeing it. Maybe there's no channel. There should be channel in one table because we would definitely need it for something. Oh, OK. Mm, I'll probably do a VLOOKUP because um, I will need it. I might need it for my business requirement. Okay, but let's use obvious ones. So there's country code here now, for example, when we checked here, see that I can see country code again, which means that once you now understand the concept of foreign keys, which means that this is a primary key in country. Because your engineers have done a thing where they've carried the primary key and put it as foreign key in other tables because they know you will need it within that table. We will get there. I don't want to confuse you, but do you understand what I'm saying? If I come to products, for example, I'm sure I'll find one of them as a foreign key. No, or even products might even be either within customer safe. Or if not, then I have to, we need to do a VLOOKUP to bring that in. Okay, they are not there, but that's why I said it's not entirely reliable, but that's another way to know. Another thing is, let's say, for example, now there's, this This is all promo, but your attributes are promo. Um, sometimes, in some situations, um, you would see, like, this is, a products table but you will see something like a promo something here do you understand or um if you go to the instructions your business requirements it says i don't want to jump because if i start explaining it to you this way you will get confused but just understand that your primary key is your unique identifier to the table it is unique to that entity to that table and it is so if it's unique to that table, then you, you can understand why SSN and um, SS, SSN will not work. Your so, social security number would not work because it's not unique to the to the attributes. It's not unique to the attributes within the table. It is unique to the table itself. Does that help in any way? Mm -hmm. Does it help? Adiola, yes. OK. So I too was getting a bit confused. confused. Yeah, but um, I think I get this. it now because I did a quick <laughs> a quick Google search. Google search, good. Yes. And good. why why I found that um and it makes a lot of sense is why we have the primary keys and we can't use the SSN is because actually someone can have different SSN throughout their lifetime. And so if, for example, you have a customer who's ordered from you and you want to pull up, you know, that customer's history, it wouldn't really make sense to use the customer, the SSN number to now search for that customer or to do and to, to pull up any data about that customer because it could have changed. Also, what if the customer made an order and they don't have SSN, like it's not in the table? So what are you going to do? And that's why we create the uh, primary key as a unique identifier for, you know, for, for the customer. And that's why I said it is you, it, the, your primary and for your primary key is a unique identifier to your table, to your entity, not the attributes. The attributes mm -hmm. are like customer name, all those things. But your primary key is a unique identifier to your entity. So you're using it to identify your table, not the attributes within your table. Mm. Okay. Does that make sense? 
So you yeah. know when I explained this entities, you know, like this one is an entity. Um, sorry, this one is an attribute. This is not unique to this attribute. It is unique to this entity. It's the same way if I add others ID. It will be unique to this entity. Now, I would be able to use this to identify this as a whole, not each. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm using this to identify this. I'm using primary key to identify my table, not my attribute. Does that make sense, everyone? Yes, no, more confused. This one, during yes, Afis, during a fifth section. Afis, can you remember that we used two hours to explain this primary key or for a key? So uh, um, from from what you just what, what you just explained now, for instance, if we, we were working on if we wanted wanted to get the amount of the quantity of Gary a customer bought, for instance, we have a customer, a customer table. The customer buys Gary. We want to Gary know. Gary is your product. Is the product. That's a product table. Mm -hmm. We want to know the quantity of Gary the customer buys. So once we have that um, uh, customer um, identifier, once you type it in, you are able to get all the other attributes of the customer, like the quantity of Gary the customer bought, the day the customer bought it. It gives you um, information about everything, all the attributes about the customer. That is what I understand so, it does. Yeah. So if you have a customer table, you have a product table, you have customer ID, you have product ID, you want to get the quantity of the Gary within the products. Gary is on that product. You want to get the quantity that if the customer, if particular customer has bought. That product ID, you can use it to impute and bring in. We will get there. It's called VLOOKUP. It's called VLOOKUP, yeah. You can use it to bring in the details from that product table into the customer table to match each customer exactly and then that way you can now say oh customer a bought 50 kg of gary customer b did not buy gary at all that is why i said the work of a data engineer is to already do that for you but your work is to now link it to say okay well this is the link between everything but the data engineer has already gone ahead to figure out which customer bought what and arrange the keys in such a way that by the time you are linking, by the time you are bring, using that product ID to bring the details into the customer's, um, into the customer's table, you, you are going to be matching it correctly because the engineer has done the right thing, should have done the right thing. Does that make sense? But that's, that's the perfect example. Like, they said to you, please tell us how many customers bought Gary in the space of three months. Gary is not inside customer's table, but it will be in product's table. That key, that cat, that oh. so automatically product ID will become a foreign key in customer's table. So I sorry, I realized what I just explained might still be a bit con 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 confusing. confusing. So we have we have a customer's table, right? Mm -hmm. So in the customer in the customer table, we now have an attribute like customer's age, customer's height, customer's mm -hmm. address. Mm -hmm. So that primary key, what it does is you need a key that once you have that key, you have information about your customer's height, you have information about your customer's address. You have if information you about your to confuse you. Don't think about it that way because you're thinking about the IDs to link to your attributes. Think about it in such a way. I get what you're trying to say, okay. and I can picture it because I'm a bit more advanced, but people okay. on the call might get confused. All right. But picture it in such a way that that ID, just think about your ID as this ID gives me access to this entire table. 
That's what you're trying to say. Remember? Yes. Yeah. yes. So this ID gives me access to this entire table. So that's why I said, always think about your ID as identifier for your table, not necessarily your attribute so you don't confuse yourself. It, just think about it as, okay, product ID gives me access to the entire product table. Whatever I need from the product table, I can get. Okay. That way, it's easy for you to draw, because I'm very graphic. It's easy for you to now do this. What I'm doing now is something that we are going to do, but I just want to use it to explain. It's easy for me to now say, you know what? I have others table. I have product table. I have customer table. This one has customer ID. This one has product ID. This one has others ID. This. <clears throat> This customer ID needs certain things from product table, right? I mean, this customer table needs certain things from product table. So then I will now go ahead and say, actually, if I do this and then I put a shape here and I say, This is my unique identifier for this. However, because I would need access here, this is a foreign key here. And with this, oh, maybe actually, let me even make it product and turn this around. Yeah, I think it was actually easier before. It's getting a bit complicated now. <laughs> but you need to actually know this because you're going to draw. This is called an ERD. I am going to do it. It's one of your assignments. Yeah, it's, <laughs> so. it's actually getting a bit complicated now. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. So you have a customer's table. Your customer's table has a primary key called a unique identifier called customer ID. You have a product table. Your product table has a unique identifier called product ID. OK. Now, in for example, what um, Omo said, but your your stakeholders have said they want an information that would only happen if these two are linked. I hate using this thing because then I will not. So they said only if these two things like this, so if they are linked in here, it means that whatever. Oh, anyway. But it's, it's, they've said that, okay, well, it's only when you link these two things like this that I know that I can get that information for my stakeholder. Now, as a data analyst, what do I do? What I will now do is figure out how can I get the details from here and bring it in here using just one identifier, which is the primary key here. This will become foreign key here. Okay, so this one now, this identifier is unique to this table. This identifier is unique to this table. And I can use this identifier that is unique to this table to get information into another table. And that identifier will become a foreign key within my, new, my table that I'm trying to get information into. 
Okay. Oh, my, I don't know how, how, how can I zoom the screen? Oh, make it bigger. Um, is it big? Is it bigger now? Is it fine? Sandy, is it fine? Yes. This is better now. It's better. Thank you. So do we understand? Are we still confused? Just favor or oh, more. I should zoom it more. Is it better? Yes. Yes. It's immediate now. So you can see it now. Okay. So yeah. just think about it as just make sure that you're saying in your head, I have different tables. I want to be able to identify table A, table B, table C, table D. What can I do to identify? How, what, what is the important attribute within those tables that can help me identify these tables across board? It is the primary key. It is tables A, I, D, tables B, I, D, table C, I, D, table E, I, D. The reason why I don't want to explain it to you as an ID is because some people, some data engineers will not come correct and tell you ID. They will call it something else. So it's left to you to figure out that this is the primary key here. So I want you to understand it as a unique identifier for that entity so that you're not looking for primary key. There are even some data sets I'll give you. You will not see primary, you won't see ID. But you, if you understand the idea, you will know that this is the key. Are we together? Can I move on? You can. Yeah. Thank you very much. At least this one did not take two hours. <laughs> okay. So now that you understand the primary key, it's the same thing as a foreign key. The difference is just what was a primary key in the first table if would become a foreign key in the second table. It will become, because I'm bringing it from table C into table A. So it doesn't, it's not unique to table A. It is unique to table C, but I need it in table A so that I can pull details from table C into table A. It's good, you bet, that's all. That's all it is. It's just simple. The key, the primary key that existed in one table being brought into the other table. That's what your foreign key is. So if we look at data sets here, this one, in, no, in customers, the country code, the country code is the foreign key within this table. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, guys? Yes? Everybody else? Are we confused? When there's general silence like this, it's confusion. And nobody That's, why, that's why I'm asking again. <laughs> so just just run, run it I, I think run the, the secondary key is more understandable than the primary key. I think we need to understand more of the primary key. Because in the, the foreign key is like a primary key you pulled from the table to another table. Yeah, so that one is very straightforward. Very well, that one is straightforward. So let's understand more of the primary key. So we still don't understand the primary key. Here I don't. Mide, Mide, you know it's going to take time to actually get through this primary key side. It's a bit easier for me because I've gone through it before, but even at that, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised because I remember my first class. Two hours. I was I was using all the examples. If, I ran out of examples. If I may add, if I may add, it, it personally took me about two months to understand what a primary key is the first time I came in contact with it. So as simple as straightforward as it is, it can be tough when you're yes, coming across the concept for the first time. Yeah, it looks simple. It looks so easy, but so complicated. You'll be looking at it and then it's nah, nah, it takes a lot of time. And so, Mide, please go back to primary keys. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. I don't oh, mind spending the rest good. of I don't I don't mind spending. Sorry, the rest sorry, of can I ask a question? Yes, ma. 
Okay, now, what's the essence of primary key? Maybe it will help to understand it better. Identify your table, to identify your table. Okay, to identify a table. Is it like a code or a number or letter? Code or number, yes. You know I said key or code. So for people that stay in, you know all those houses that have like all those um, those smart home system where you have to like impute something. Like when yeah. you not yeah. impute that thing, the door will not open. Yes. Uh -huh. So that's a code, ba. So yes. code, you need a code to be able to to identify to you to be able to to Assess say that. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. So you need a code to uh, identify that entity, that table, to say that okay, well, this code is unique to this table. I think there's some things I want to understand. You know, you showed I'm us a table. Order. Please, Afis, unmute and explain it from <laughs> a student's point you know, of view. Because it was the first part, it took me the whole class to even get it. I didn't even get it in first class, but when you started using uh, practical examples, it made more yes. sense, you know? Yes, yes. It's, 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 yeah. it's very, foreign keys, foreign keys are easy, because people just know that foreign keys, it belongs to another table, so I'm just pulling yeah. it. Yeah. But primary keys are, I can't... Let's be... <laughs> Why did you answer me after I said And it's so be. funny how... I think it's just differences in 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 people. Primary keys was one of the easiest things I understood when I started data analysis. I didn't. I'm not trying to say. I'm just trying to say like it's just differences in how people see things. The moment I understood that, once I see something that is unique, and I always know that it's going to be a number. It's going to be a number. They might put like letters in front, but it's always going to be a number and it will never repeat itself. So that's another thing you should know. There will never be two ones. If you see a column and it has one, two, five, one, that's not a primary key. In that table, though, it might be a primary key in another table, but in that table, that's not the primary key. Okay, in sorry. that table. Mm -hmm. and Sorry, can I say that primary key are the unique codes to each person? To each table. Okay, each table. Mm -hmm. So let's do practical. All right. So this is this is a primary key in this table. But yes, it is it is it, it, it works with this entire attributes. Right? So if I pick this key, I can get the details of this entire table, right? I can get the details of this, sorry, this entire column. Is this column? Rows, column, row, row, column, whatever. I always get confused. Is this column? Row, row. Wow, wow. Thank you. Exactly, okay, that's what is confusing me because the, I know that in a table has columns and rows. Mm -hmm. So when you are saying table, so it's confusing me more. Okay, so you remember when at the beginning, did you pay attention at the beginning when I when I explained entity or table? Sorry, yes, I didn't, no, no. Okay, so let's do that again. Entities and table, are, they mean the same thing. That's what I said at the beginning, and I said this is it. This is an entity. This is a table. Remember when I did this. I said this one is a table, this one is a table, this one is a table, this one is a table. But this is a table. This is a table that has different attributes. This is an attribute. This one is an attribute. This one is an attribute. This attribute. But they are all within one table, one entity. Yeah? So in here now, this entire thing, is a table. Do you understand that? If I move I here. Yes, I do. This entire one is also a table. Now, within this table now, there is 
there are different attributes. This is an attribute, this is an attribute, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, this is our primary key because this key can help us find all of these attributes. And it is unique to these attributes. Okay. Make sense? Yes. But it's I think with practice, you would start to understand and then watch videos. Primary keys can be very tricky, especially because you have engineers who who would not exactly tell you if they were doing if for example here now they said customer id you will easily know that it's a primary key to get because a lot of times customer id pro product id those are primary keys but the reason why i want you to understand the concept not see it as id is because if you have data sets where this one they even tried some of your primary keys will be in, in the middle like this at least maybe this one they put it <laughs> they put it here first you can see some primary key will be at the end so if you understand the concept you can identify your primary keys okay so so basically the primary key is the unique um identification number for each person yeah so it doesn't matter where it comes in it's just that one that identifies that particular person that you can have like two of it so he identifies this, the whole of, like this person now. Like he's unique to that it's unique to that. Person. Yes, yes, he's unique to them. He's unique to this person. This one is unique to this person. This one is unique so, to this sorry person. Sorry to, to come in. I have just been listening since, and I think uh, I understand the confusion in primary key, and uh, everybody is basically saying the same thing, but missing that one factor which is what um, Google just did now. So someone pointed out, for example, why that social security number might not be possible, because social security, no security number, from my understanding, is unique to one person. But we are not talking about that person right now. We are talking about a data set. So for example, if what if that person calls and um, didn't give uh, or what it is under data that there's no primary uh, social security number attached to that person and you are trying to get something unique to that person so it has to be something that covers everything about that person or everything about that entity in the data set from my own understanding so that's why some things might seem unique to the person but might not be a primary key so it's just how I how I always understand it. It's flawed, it's not always accurate, but it's just something to build from the ground up from. So it's something unique. Like for example, this customer code, like uh, Mide said, it's very easy to say that, oh, this one, because they put it down everything. The customer code has customer 222478. If you check that number, that number is not going to repeat or it's not going to come up under any other uh, what's it called now? Person. Now, I'm using person now, or what well, would I call it, or something. So, okay, like this. So, this number is only unique to one um, um, entity, or to put it like that. So, that's now an understanding of it. Wahib, thank you. I hope people understand it from what you said. Wahib, you want to say something? Yeah. Um... So um, before before now, yeah, I've not heard of the concept primary key and foreign key before, but I've been using the example for quite a while at work. So, but immediately started um, to explain what a primary key is. I kind of understood immediately, but I'm not even sure if I understood it tot uh, totally. So, but let's say let's say I'm trying to use a VLOOKUP. I have a multi um, data set. I have like a workbook that has a different worksheet. So, I'm trying to get um, a particular um data from a particular worksheet from one worksheet um to another so let's say i'm just trying to get the amounts from the um sales worksheet then i'm trying to get the amount i'm trying to match the amount to a particular customer so the primary key is the customer id that i you know when you do in vlookup you select a column so usually i, I usually select the customer id because i know it's i just don't want to start using vlookup words because i feel like it will confuse people more that's why I didn't talk, but please go ahead. 
so I just do that. I just select the column and, you know, so it's, it's like, um, for me, it's like the, um, data, the data, the data that exists in, I won't say all workbook, but that exists in two workbook that you're trying to create a relationship in between. So once you put that in the field lookup, then it just brings you the exact, um, amounts on the exact amount you're looking for and you know, like that. So we really started explaining that. I was like, okay, so that's, it's actually called primary key. Okay. Then, yeah. Yes, you are right. And you are, you have a better understanding because you already, you work with Excel. So you, you sort of, you were able to quickly link it to VLOOKUP. You were able to, which is good. But the reason why I didn't bring VLOOKUP and other things is because people that are just starting or people that don't, have never come across it or know about this thing, I want them to be able to think about it the way you did, basically. Omawumi. Sorry, I was going to, the, the, the thing about the social security number we said, if we had a social security table, the social security number could pass as um, the primary key, can't it, for that table? It depends on what attribute is on the table. But don't confuse, don't let social security, see, don't think about attributes. Don't let the attributes be the thing that will confuse you. Yes, it might pass as that if the engineers have done it in such a way that it is unique to every attribute, right? But if it's not, if, if because people change their SSN often, do you get? Which is why you will not even find it as a table. You most likely might not find it as a table. You will find it as an attribute in a table because it can change. It can actually change something. I think I think in the US it can actually change. I don't know, but it can change. Sure you get. So think about it more of that will probably go as an attribute underneath an entity, underneath a table. Okay. Any other questions? Guys, I know that right now you seem very confused but i assure you i assure you i promise you actually the moment um what's it called the moment we continue the moment we continue the moment we 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 are we are being experimental we are practicing it will come to you <laughs> I don't know how to. I think sometimes it's a spirit. <laughs> it will come, and I'm not trying to be rude or anything. I'm just, I'm serious because I know this struggle. Like my students, my first batch of students, they had this struggle. So I understand this struggle. It will come to you. The spirit will just descend. That, ah, what you get here? Got it. But just trust the process. I know that right now it seems foreign, but trust the process. I will get there. We'll get there together. Primary key. Okay. Wow. <laughs> foreign key go con loss us finally. <laughs> no, that's the funny thing. Foreign key is very easy. Foreign key is just basically is basically taking. Let's use this one because I feel like that one will confuse you. It's basically saying that oh, in here, I probably would need no actually in here I probably would need some things from the product table so i need an id from the product table okay i think i'll add to your assignment and i will tell you guys to draw up a schema for me i think a schema will help you understand primary and foreign keys um So I think um, this will help you because if I Google schemas, I'm just going to show you what I mean. I feel like schemas is another way that helps 
um this is more sql related well yeah it's called ard in um i want images um i feel like schema is another thing i've been able to use to explain primary and foreign key Well, I just don't want a confusing schema. <laughs> so this is a schema, right? Um, let me increase my font. Can we see it? Because I know that. Can you see? I'm gonna. Can we see it now? Is it better? Yeah, it's a bit better. Yeah. Oh, should well, I? You could, you could actually make it larger, but I can see it. Maybe you make it two hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, better now. Okay. you will rest. Anyway, so this is a schema. See, it says other items, orders, users, merchants. This one's even very straightforward. But the reason why I brought up a schema is because as a data analyst, it will help you kind no, as a data engineer. Uh, if you do a bit of data engineering, you you would do because schemas are usually for databases. Like when you're trying to create a database, fix the tables. I mean, you can use it as a data analyst as well. But yeah, it, it see how here they just went straight forward to ID, 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 ID. And if you see, see, other ID is is an ID here. Even other items does not even have its own ID. See, but other ID, if you see, is an ID here. It says ID, but when they brought it into another table, they called it other ID because if they call it just ID, it will confuse you, right? They called it other ID so that you know what ID you are working with. Here it's called product ID, okay? Now, these two are foreign keys within this table because they did not come from this table. They came from one table one here and where's the product and this table the same thing with this user id it is a foreign key within this table because it's coming from a different table entirely into this table there is no foreign key here this is coming as a foreign key into this table because it's admin id is there an admin table hmm, that's weird Maybe admin. Anyway, but I can tell that this is a foreign key, right? This is a foreign key. See, we have a merchant table. It's coming in here as a foreign key because this is not the original table. Does that make sense? It's, does that explain foreign keys? Yes, he, he explains it. It means that um, foreign key is something that you bring in from somewhere else that it doesn't belong to that one. Yeah, but you need it. You so you want to use it to access details from that table. You want to use it to access details from that table. So you need it in the original table that you're trying to, like um, Tohib said, you're trying to build a relationship in. I feel like this this works for people like Tohib and people like um Mr. Defolari because they've worked with Excel, so they might be able to quickly do one on one and picture everything together. But I'm very concerned about people who haven't used the tools at all. I want you guys to get it. Yes? No? Go ahead. Stop. Yeah, yeah I understand. Please go ahead. Okay. Amazing. So I want you guys to draw a schema. I feel like if you draw a schema, you will start to understand. It's the same thing as an ARD, but you will start to understand. Um, you start to understand um, t -t 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 foreign keys and primary keys. Right. These ones, I want you guys to read up on it. Fact table and dimensional table. Um, trying to cover grounds. Okay, read up on fact table and dimensional table, but I'm still going to touch on it anyway. So but I want us to do practicals. So I've been given this data set. Oh, I want to get details from it, blah, 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 blah. What do I do? Da, 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 da. Now, what's the first thing as a data? And I was going to touch on macros. I don't know if I've put it. 
But then, the only reason why I want to sort of talk about it is because if you are if you are like me sometimes and you're lazy and you know that you work for a financial company where you use the same data set and you don't want to be doing the same thing by yourself over and over and over again that's where this comes in this macro comes in it's just basically a way for you to record wait wait it's a way for you to record what you do and how to access macros please i hope we all have excel sql and power bi on our laptop now Please, if you don't, it's very important before next class, install it, get it working so that you can be doing as like I'm doing. Link? Is there like a link for us that we can use? I put, are you so, on the WhatsApp group? Sorry, I have what I, is there any particular version that we will require? No, 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 no. Okay. Not added me to the right. WhatsApp group and you've got Did you number. send the number, your number to the number I put in the email, they put in the email address? No. I'm sorry, a particular version of what exactly? Because you went. No, 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 you don't need a particular version of anything. You just need to have SQL, Excel, and Power BI on your laptop. You don't need version. Okay. But you, your SQL, I would suggest Microsoft SQL, so SSMS, because there's Oracle. Oracle has their own SQL as well. So download SSMS, download, it's called SSMS, but Microsoft SQL, SQL Cell, Server management system that's ssms i'm not speaking big grammar because i know that big grammar can be confusing but anyway so the reason is because i want you guys to be practicing as i'm doing it now let me just i'm gonna breeze through macro because it's not is is a good to know um let's say for example i want to clean my data set and i know that this is a, these are the kind of data sets i would always be working with you know within this company so it's always going to come in this version um that's why i said i don't want to teach you macro because if it doesn't mm, it might not really work but it might depending on that one will come with experience but anyway so if you go to your developers you say record macro you call it the name that you want let's say cleaning process if you want to do a short key for a, a shortcut key, so maybe you want to press Control C, you can do that here. I'm not going to waste time to do that. And then you're going to say store macro in. You can choose to store it in this workbook or your personal macro workbook. What this does is even if you're not working on this particular workbook, which is this particular Excel sheet, and you want to do the same step in another Excel sheet, if you save it here, you have access to it. Okay. I'm going to put this workbook. If you want to explain to yourself what this one does, you can put it. I use this to clean my data. And I press OK. Oh, sorry. Um, doesn't allow spaces. Let me click OK. Now it's recording. So if I start cleaning and doing things, um it will store it for me i can just click stop recording here uh, now if i see this data set the first thing i want to do is i want to ask myself what do i think the insights would look like from this data set what do i think that um stakeholders will want to see from here any anybody anybody want to guess? Anyone wants to guess? Can you repeat it again? See, I didn't really get the question. What if you look at this data set? What do you think a stakeholder will want to see? What insights do you think a stakeholder will want to get from this data set? Okay, so I think that they want to know um, how long the, each person has been on the social security number. 
or the, how long the person has had the social security number. Yes, I heard you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Well, how long they've been a board member? Okay. And how many people in a particular city? Who is that? Toby speaking. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Okay, that's fine. We've all done well. Everyone has done well. Okay, so now, <clears throat> one thing I want to do is I want to split the names. And why do I say that? Sometimes a stakeholder can say, you know what, I just want the first names of people that are staying in California that have been a member for over 15 years. Okay? You want to have that ability. You don't now want to be going back to your data set and now start Ah, let me know. You want to already have that ability. Yes, they've put it together, but if they don't want a full name and they just want the first name or they just want the last name, you want to have that ability to do that. Secondly, if I look at this city state zip, I don't want it together because what if they just want to know people in California? I'm guessing this CA means California. I'm not a US person, so um, or Ohio or I don't know what CEO means, but if they just want to know that details, I want to be able to have a column that says that's what I'm going to do. Um, if they want to know, you know, how long have they been, were they our members for? Um, when did they stop being a member? Things like that. I will split this as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is do that cleanup. Okay. I'm going to insert two columns and then I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go to my data tab. Bear in mind, we are still recording our macro. I'm going to go to my data tab and I'm going to go to what is called text to column. OK, click on text to column. Select delimited. Click next. Now it's asking me, how do I want to separate these words? I'm going to click space because that's the easiest in this particular column. That's the easiest thing to use. If I was in another column that had maybe dash, like the dates one, we'll do that one and I'll show you. But I'm going to click space and then I'm going to click next. Now I'm going to store it as a text. It, you don't have to do this, but I do this as just a good practice and because i've seen over the years that text works better for me when i'm trying to pull details out but you don't have to do this and then i'm going to click this one and i'm going to store it as a text and then i'm going to click finish and i'm going to click oh no sorry hmm. Sorry, so the reason why it, it cleared out these names and I didn't want it to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select. Sorry, I'm just going to do this quickly. I'm going to select destination. Right. And I'm going to tell it, put it here for me. OK, so I'll just do this and hold my mouse across and then finish. That way it splits it and it still leaves my column for me. Now I can go ahead and say full names. I can go ahead and say first name. I can go ahead and say last name. OK, again, why? Because I know it's very important for you to ask questions. Why did I do that? Because I know that stakeholders don't always know what they want. 
they can come back and say they want to just see last names. They can come back and tell me they want to see just first names. I want to be able to have this ready without having to come back to my data set to do any extra work. OK, I'm going to do the same thing here. But before I do, there's a space somewhere here that would throw off what I want to do. But anyway. So this again, we are just still cleaning our data. OK. We are cleaning and this is why I said it can take you up to 60 percent. You can take up to 60 percent of your time because we're just cleaning the data. If I say text to column. Next. Now, if I say space. And I scroll through. See, this is why I didn't want to say space, because there's a space between San and Francisco and it split it for me. If I come and say order and I say maybe comma. Still doesn't work. Still doesn't work because some places have just space and not comma. So this is part of. Sorry, I live alone and I can hear cracks. Um, sorry, just want to be sure I'm safe. This is part of your cleaning process. You need to be able to identify. Like, see here, um, there's space here. There is no space. There's no col um comma here. There is no comma here and so on and so forth. So you want to be able to, you want to be safe, better safe than sorry. Okay. And know that you're not making error. This is easy for me to spot because it's just 20 rows. If I had 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, I'm not going to be able to quickly spot that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and and do it myself. I'm thinking, should I? I'm not, don't worry, you. I'm still here for you. I'm here. What I'm just trying to do is ensure that I don't have extra spaces. So now what I can do is I can decide to say, you know what, let me quickly trim this row or this column um, so that if it has unnecessary spaces, it can just clean it up for me. Right. And that that was what I used here. I just said trim. Um, if in fact, let me go back. See, it says removes all spaces from a text string string except for single spaces between words. OK, so that's that's what trim does. That's one of the formulas. It just helps you streamline, you know, your text and it cleans it out for you. And if you just double click with that black arrow, it, this one, this has removed any extra spaces. And then I can now decide and say, this is my new city. This is state. And then zip, okay? And I can decide, you know what? I don't need this anymore. I can now delete it if I want to now, but yeah. Ugh, I always forget Excel, here we go. Because I've already used this one as a link now, it will not delete anyway. But then there's a way to do it, but long story. Um, but then this becomes my new column, right? And in here, if there were like extra spaces here, I have cleaned this. People do this, we do this in data analysis. I think they even do, anyone that has used Excel, I think, I'm not sure, but you should be able to like do trim. And it's just because if you have a large data set, you don't know, you're not going to be able to identify the ones that maybe they've pressed three spaces. You won't know, you, you won't have time. In fact, you will just be tired. So it's just easy for you to quickly do that and then keep it moving, okay? Now,
I'm here. I'm thinking. <laughs> this is part of the process as a data analyst. You just need to think of the best way to achieve what you're trying to do. That's what I'm doing. I would, I would, I would explain better. Just give me a moment. Okay, so if I now want to not have this um, formulas, um, so oh no no no, I'm good. So if I want to not have the formula. Um, because you know we've done this using a formula, so if I want to not have formulas, I just want what I have done. What I will do is just come here, right click, and then go to paste, and I will just say I want just the values, and then I can go ahead to delete this. I can't even go ahead to delete this, and it will not be affected. I will be Gucci. I'll be good. OK, um, now let's solve the delimiter issue. I think I'll just use spaces. Um, no, I'll just use, sorry, commas. Um, and then. And then for this one that have space, I would also select space. Ah, uh, but the problem with that is. Let's do comments first. Yes, the comments. Um, and then I go to my next and I save it again. This is just me. Don't listen to what I do. Um, no, 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 no. Sorry. I didn't pick my. And then I tell it where I want it to save as. Tell it what I want. And I can now click finish and say OK. So this has done this. Now I can split this. I can use a code. Oh, but do I want to do that? Um, I want to do that. I want to do that. I can either do that or I can select this, come to text to column, do it single um, and finish. And it would do that. I can do the same thing here. We're going to do that for now because time is fast spent and I haven't even done half. But again, I want you to um, research on the best ways to split your like split this for example actually before i do that let's split this i thought i split this already let's split this next space no commas 
Um, next, I want this to be here and here, and then I want it to be in. No, no, no. I don't want it back. No tap. Back. Next. Good. So this is split and then I can come here and just do this on their own. Do this, but I want you to. I want you to research on. How to get this done together, OK? Because I don't want. Um, right, so now I can now say this is my city, this is my state, this is the zip code, OK? Right, and then if I do, if I want to do the same thing, so another thing I would do now is look at this dates. It's just, is anyhow, I can go to my, go away, go away. I can go to my home section and say I want to edit this column and I can go to the date section. I, I prefer doing it this way because I can see this, um, but there's a shortcut. There's always a shortcut in Excel, but I'm going to show you the normal way. And I can now decide to say I want to see it this way. And it will sort that out for me. And then if I decide now that this is well, I want to split it. I can do that. I I would split it, and there's a reason for that. Um, all right, so I just clicked on order, and I used what is in the middle. So it knows that after it's splitting based off of that, and then I can say next. I can put this as a date, I can put this as a date, okay? And I can finish, good, I didn't spill. And I can come back here, because it's bringing it to me as numbers, and go here and say, give it to me as, ugh, my hand hurts, as a date, okay? All right, and it's back and I can do the same thing here and say, give it to me as a date. And we are back. OK, so basically I have cleaned. What is going on? Uh, I have cleaned this and now I am seeing it as a date. If I don't like if you don't want this one, so always know that this is where you, you pick. Let's say, for example, this, I'm sure it's in general. If I want it to be numbers, I can go here and say, you know what? I want to see it in numbers. I don't want decimals. This one, this is how you format your cells. This, is, this part of data analysis is very important, okay? You need to go through your columns, see what you have there, see if it's a date, align it the way you want. If if you like, if you sometimes even your your in the business requirement, they, not business, but when you're having conversations, they will tell you they don't want to see it fully. So you can decide and do actually do this one. If they don't want to see it fully. You can you can tweak it however you like. It's it's both a personal and business thing. So is it? You can decide. You know what? I prefer it. I prefer seeing. October, January, so that when I'm pulling it and I use words, it's easier. Or oh, no, I'm actually fine with numbers. I just want to see 07, 08, 09. You decide, okay? There's no one way, one way fits all for that. You are the one that will decide what is what, okay? And then I can now say, board members start date. Now, these ones, they did not teach me. Like, what I'm saying is they didn't tell me that that's what they want to see, but I'm just using, you know, my sense to say that, okay, you know what? I feel like um, 
this one should look or this one should be called this and I can call this end slash ongoing date. Depends. You 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 are you are the driver of of your of whatever it is you're doing. So feel free to drive it the date the, the cleaning of your data sets the way that you're comfortable with. Okay. So now I've done all of those cleaning. Um I'm just gonna have a look finally. Like, is there anything else I want to do? No, I think off the top of my head to 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 the abilities that I'm going to use this data set for. I have cleaned it to a certain extent. I've cleaned it well. I can decide to take this off. That's a personal thing. I can decide, you know what, leave it. In case they ever come and they're like, we want to see the city state zip together, I can use that. Um, if not, I can say, you know what, I have them split out. I don't need to split. Now, one last thing. I'm going to stop recording our macro now because we are done with cleaning. And if I stop it, if I go to macros, it would be there. If I run it, it would do it. It would do everything we've done. Okay. Um, one thing I want to say is because I, I'm going to give you assignments and I want you to do the assignments and you might need to know this thing. Let me just see. Now, there's another thing. Let's say, for example, this column is here, right? People do this a lot. Oof, boy. And they hide it. Then they come here now and they open another two. There's like another two. These, these are part of your cleaning process. And they hide this as well. And they come here. And they hide it. Bah. And you are there like. If you don't have a look at this and clean it, right? You will start coding or you will start querying. And you will just see that sometimes because Excel is oof. Anyway, you will just see that you're getting errors. For no good reason. You're using the same um formulas you've been using you're doing everything right it's just not working even as little as the way this one is not in text it's just not working excel can be that sensitive you know so you always want to make sure that you're doing everything right so if you if for example you notice things like this like ah oh, you can see a c but there's no d you just need to make sure this one you actually have to take your time there's no i don't i i because i don't use excel a lot i don't know the shortcut for this but i i would suggest don't try to do what will to the answer take your time look through the data set see if you have any hidden columns or rows delete them this is part of your cleaning process even if you have 200 columns and a million data and everything you want to be sure you want to be sure that you're doing the right thing take your time and that's why i said cleaning process can take you two days you are still on it it is one of the most unnecessarily long procedures that be processed to do within data analysis and data sets delete okay so you always have to make sure that you're identifying your another way let's say for example uh let's i'm just going to clear this for example let's say for example this did not have anything and i don't want i don't want empty cells because excel my trades again i say auntie you have empty set excel what i would do is i would say F5, go to, and I will go to special. I would click on blanks and say, OK. It would identify all the blanks within that table set for me. If I now type NA, 
Oh, I shouldn't have clicked into it. I type N A and type and press Control Enter. It will fill all my blank cells with N A, and that way it has something in there. So Excel cannot throw it off at me. I can actually, when I'm filtering, I can say all the N A's. Let me see them so I know the ones that don't have a zip code, for example. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yes. I got lost along the way, but it does. It does make sense. Thank you. You made work is as small. Odogo, what did you say? Got no sense, but I'm just there. Don't worry, I'll come back later. I won't drag everybody back here to watch the video and get. Yes, if you watch the video, you. I think that's another thing. Watch the video slowly because now it feels like I'm just doing it really yes, fast sir, but yeah, if you yeah, take your I time you watch the video was it? let me do it but go on i'm sorry i'm so fast but i want to cover enough ground it's almost two o'clock so again those are the things so that's why i've highlighted them here like identify empty rows empty columns um you know control a sometimes control a control period can help you quickly identify what am i doing the things that are if i just say control a control period it, it would let's say for example this is not there and i just say control a control period you know it will just help you quickly identify <clears throat> excuse me identify the the, the the empty columns empty rows for identifying and removing spaces i've done this i used trim it's the same thing with clean uh, almost similar but is another thing you need to know, understand is you don't need to cram these formulas just know what you're trying to do and know what you're trying to achieve right just have an idea of what they do excel would always um have them the moment you type the first maybe two letters i said two letters because they can be plenty c's two to three letters excel already understand and make it a practice to type your formulas here rather than in the cell box i think that's just a good practice for me sometimes i forget so if i say clean this for example excel see how i typed just cl excel popped it out for me excel knows what to do with things like that so you can use trim you can use clean for identifying and removing your spaces um so we've done splitting of names um uh, we've done splitting of address um duplicates let me quickly show you duplicates so if i say mm, control a it's funny how Excel has already identified this as a table and I've not even done that. Hmm. Sometimes only Excel man. Um, ah, someone is just joining us. So if I say duplicate, I want to show you duplicate. I can go to data um, in here. It says remove duplicates. Now I'm going to show you in real time. what that is so that you understand how it works okay so if i say remove duplicates i can now unselect and say use i mean i can't even choose to actually select all because there's no but then is that dates i will remove dates because dates can be very tricky and then i will say okay see how oh, duplicates found dear excel there are duplicates there Please don't 
So Excel people, why is Excel telling me there's no duplicates? I know that dates used to throw it off a lot. So I always try to remove dates. Actually, you know what? I'm select all use just this for me. Come on, there are duplicates. Please don't stress me. Right. Okay. At least we finally figured out something. But <clears throat> did we see what I'm going to do again? So if I say remove duplicates on select all, I know that dates and numbers actually throw Excel off sometimes. So most times when I'm doing this at work, I, I on select the dates and some numbers. So I used full names and it worked. Yeah, I identified the last three that I added and it removed it, okay? That's a very simple way to remove duplicates if you have duplicates and without actually scrolling through your entire this thing. We've done text to column. We've done this. Um, I've done this, filling in, in a blank. I've told you guys how to do it as well. Good, so let's now say I've done this now and I want to have it as a table. I'm going to select all and then I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to say insert table. Yeah, and I'm going to say, it says where's the data, blah, blah, blah. Is already, that's another thing Excel can be good for. It would identify what it can tell that, okay, this thing actually has, this is the table she's trying to do, create. And my table has headers because they do. If I click OK, it automatically becomes a table. I can come here and decide to call this table um, customer details. Okay. This, the, the reason why, the reason why actually I should actually not be using spaces because in, in SQL, I'm going to emphasize the need for you for the importance of not using spaces when you're naming things when we get there. So if I say customer details, the reason why I always advise people to do this, you don't have to. But the reason why I advise people to do this is when you're using when you're doing a multi entity data, when you're working with a multi entity data set, it can help your life because if you're trying to do VLOOKUP, I can just call it customer's details rather than now having to go select the, the table and now selecting everything. Mm -mm, mm. Just type customer details, Excel will we'll get there. You understand what I'm saying? So now this is that. With this, I can filter. With this, I can say, um, if we come here and I want to only see CA, no, sorry, select all, if I want to only see, if I want to see CA, people that live in CA, it would it's very easy for you to manipulate and get. <gasps> Sorry, guys, I'm a very scary person. I get scared easily. So, anyway. Sorry, I live alone. So all these noises I'm hearing. <laughs> Back to what we're saying. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, you can put it into a table and then you can now decide to start manipulating, trying to get details from it and understanding what you're doing. So you've sort, you sorted, we've basically done this now with this data set that looks, that might look simple, but it's because it's a single entity data set. Once we do the same, try to do the same thing for multi entity, we are just, <laughs> we're getting there. Okay. I think it's a good place to stop. Next week or Friday, I would see if I can join and we'll do a bit of formulas because formula, well, we'll do a bit of formulas and um, we can then look into multi-entity data sets, okay? And you guys can do your assignments. But so far, so good. Do we, are we good? As we round up, we're finished though. Because I feel like if I teach anything now, it would 
people will just tell you we day. It's like you don't like us, so why are you still adding more to this? Thank you. Did you guys, anybody else, do you have questions? Are you confused? There will be a lot, like I said, there will be a lot of confusions at, um, confusion at, the, at first, but as you go, it will get easier. Okay, so for the dates that was changed, um, trying to get them it to be sorted in dates, months, and year. Um, I've tried that with some of my um, data, and I found out that it changed. Maybe somebody's supposed to be um, 4th of November. It changes it hmm. to 11th of April, and I have to now start doing it manually. So I, I need to know. It's the, I have to do it. Certain. It might be the method you're using. Have you checked this? Did you change? Because I use UK, so it might be the method you're using. Okay, because I, I converted from Excel to Google Sheets and noticed that when I converted to Google Sheets, it wasn't and formatted it in that way. It um, gave different analysis, so I had to now start. Um, doing it all over again. So about um, probably check, maybe it's from the setting you mentioned, if that's the case. Okay, so let me look at this. Any other questions? Anybody else have anything to say? Are we on, I remember I asked my, my first students this, I was like, from a scale of one to tell, how confused have I left you? <laughs> Guys, unmute yourself and talk. Um, um, I think I was doing quite well until the Excel part and I just lost my way. And they said, follow who no road. I follow who no road. I go lost too. So it's okay. Yeah. Guys, on a scale of one to tell, how lost are you? <laughs> so they minus two. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was doing fine too before you started the magic on Excel. <laughs> Thank you. So it's not only me. Everything was all right until Excel came. Bah, French. I think I would say 7.5. You are confused, 7.5. Oh, man. Oh, I'm confused oh. like 2.5, but like I understand oh. like 7.5. Yes. Ah. Please, so. Ah, uh, like this. Okay, oh, wow. <laughs> I don't about to say, oh my God. After four hours, you're confused 7.5. Hey, no, no, no. <laughs> Okay. At the point, I got lost. But like going back to watch it now, I would, I'm sure I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I, I will upload it on YouTube for you. Yeah, I will upload it on YouTube for you. You guys, yeah, it would, it would get easier. It is normal. Is is you're new to it in a way, so it's normal for you to be like, "This is gibberish." It's normal. I think one of my problem was that I did not follow you when you started Excel. Like when you started working on it, I I did not like follow suit immediately. Mm -hmm. So you had already started before I like started, and at the point I'm like, okay, you know what, just fuck it and listen. I'm sorry, I'm using password. So that's another thing that is very important. Well, that's why I say that as I'm doing, be doing it too. Be doing it. Be. I know that it seems like I'm very fast, but it's easier if you're following me. It's very easy for you to understand what is going on, at least to a certain extent. Then the rest, you can go back and watch the video again and practice and you know that you'll get it. But if you don't follow me, you can be in Kafancha and I'm already in song water. Okay? Um... But don't worry, it's, it's, it's just a time thing. It will get easier. Once I post, once I put the YouTube up and I figure out how to share it for just you guys, I don't can I don't want to make it public yet. So if you have to watch it 15 times, please watch it. As in, when I was learning data analysis, I remember the, I just don't like talking about my journey because people used to say that me and my journey, I'm always talking about my journey, but I always see it as, as a way to encourage people. I remember then, let me tell you some more about my gist. I was doing masters. I was working. 
I was doing a training for another job. I had started dissertation. And then I had classes, second year classes. And I had my class, my data analysis class. So I had about six different things I was doing, including data analysis. But I had to, I knew that we all, I like soft life and I wanted money. So I told myself, even if I have to deprive myself of sleep, I will, I will watch this thing. I will get it. My mentor, he eventually made me a mentor in his, um, in his own, you know, school. Because any small thing, eh, hey, sir, sorry to disturb you. I noticed that. He said, hey, okay, we'll talk about it on Friday. On Friday, he will first start with me. Eh, hey, hey, you guys, your Harvard, you they used to call me Harvard. Your Harvard has question. No, I would sit there on the end of my head. So you just need to know that it's time. Like the more you give the, the time, the more time you give into it, the better the results. You would you would start to grasp it little by little. But it requires, I'm not going to lie, it requires dedication, it requires time, it requires you saying to yourself, I want to dedicate this time to this team. It requires that. And if you do that, you have me. You can always ask questions. You have the group chat. Drop it. Even some questions that I might not really know answer to. Somebody else might have already. That was what happened during my time. Somebody else would have already encountered it. I was always the one that encountered encountered it anyway. I was always the one that knew how to solve it in another way. But somebody else could have encountered it and be like, oh, I actually went through this thing. Oh, this is what I did to solve it. it. That's another thing you guys have. You have a community. You're not just learning from me. You're learning from each other as well. So posts drop the question let your if nobody can answer it then i can figure out what's going on and we can solve the problem okay thank you so much for joining overall i hope you guys enjoyed the class even if excel is confusing you and making you feel like you don't know what you are doing in life you know what you are doing but overall i hope you <laughs> i hope you enjoyed the class if you enjoyed the class raise up your hands It's sleep for me, to Adiola. Me and sleep. Hmm. But then I don't sleep anymore. Now, adulting has kicked in. <laughs> I barely, I got, Afiz even asked me that question this morning. Like, did you sleep? I didn't sleep. I got like barely three hours of sleep this morning because I was doing something and I was also pre pre prepping for this. And yeah, sleep is a, anyway, sure. Thank you guys. Thank you for enjoying the class. Thank you for joining. And see you in the on, on Friday tutorial. I will join this one because I want us to talk about um Jonathan Bay. I want us to talk about formulas. Thank you. Formulas. Um and then I might not join the next one, but we'll see. But thank you. Have yourself a good go and enjoy your weekend. Don't open book. Go and eat. Go out. Now when you come back at night, you now remember that ah, you have a say. If I now open book, I will get but money. Then they do. Go <laughs> <laughs> sleep in your house. I will. I will post the recording on. Let me. I will get you materials on the WhatsApp. No, because it, it's not going to work that way.